in the presence of a of a
light, let's get it. I'm the future, I'm in it. Check score, I'm winning. Green light, let's get it. I just win, win, win, win, win. I'm on 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Instant. Everything around me looks a little great. Ever since you found out where you brought my brain, I just need a time out, probably just a sprain. It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay. Got a lot of words you don't know how to say. Pull out all your big ones, trying to flip my face. I give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great. It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay. I don't want to see you worry. But if you come on too early, yeah. if you make my toes too curly, yeah. and if you really, really have on me, yeah. baby, get hold that roll, how do you get it so wrong? Mm. Baby, sometimes you're cold, on a big problem, though, yeah, yeah. Cause you me, me oh, an angel. If you ask me why, I say, yeah, yo. Oh. Everything around me looks a little great. Ever since you found out, worry about my brain. I just need a time out. Probably just a sprain. It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay. Got a lot of words you don't know how to say. Pull out all your big ones, tryna fill my face. I give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great. It's okay, babe, baby, it's okay. I'm alright, everything fine, everything good, everything nice. Don't pull the curtain, there's something is certain, just living your life. Taking a drive, stay in your lane. Don't veer off, like go insane. Think of your brain as a shelter in place, don't let no one in, just lock up your shades. Change to be feared if you hear what they're saying. On the news, feeding us views. Mmm, never feel good to be tame. Taking my feet, treat it as true. Ooh, ain't it a breeze to forget how to speak and let them do the speaking for you. Ooh, don't you feel free and to give your freedom decisions to be made by the group. Mama told me, safe for folding. Trying to carve yourself a space Run over backwards Let the assholes run us right down the train Everything around me looks a little great Ever since you found out Worry about my brain I just need a time out Probably just a sprain It's okay, baby, baby, it's okay Got a lot of words you don't know how to say Pull out all your big words
I've been giving you the worst. Now you wanna stay the night. Pity how you wear a car for me. But forgetting how to talk. Nah, I don't like no humble beats. Just go and slice it up. Now it's time to marry.
presence of a Presence of a You are now in the presence of a
everybody and welcome to the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil. That's right, PUBG Mobile Esports is back. I have Hot Jukes and making his debut on the global stage, my man DK Bro. How are you feeling today? Ooh, Jukes, I gotta say I am super excited to be here. I mean, I think we're in for an absolutely jam-packed day with so much coming out on the battlefield. Man, I feel like I've been hibernating for way too long. It's so good to finally see some PUBG Mobile esports. And let's go ahead and take a look at the format so we can show you guys how this is gonna go down. Live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So players have already been here. They have been playing for quite a bit here, DK. Yeah, I mean, they've been working, grinding all the way back from the 3rd of March, starting with those online qualifiers, working their way through round one where we had it was open to everybody that could participate in the region. And then we concluded with only the top 128 teams to see who's going to move on to be into the top 32. That's right. And then the qualifier started there on the 28th. We are now here on today, the 30th. So it has been just dwindling down little by little from 32 teams. We have now reached the top 16, baby. So that is where we are at today. And man, we have some monster squads here on the roster here, uh, DK. Yeah, Jukes, I think it's going to be an absolutely insane day. As we know, we've got our top 16 teams that made it through the qualifier finals. Well, rather, that's here today, right? Uh, the top team, of course, who wins today's uh, event is going to get that direct seat into the main event. The rest of the teams, though, they're still going to have to do a bit of grinding all the way over in the prelims. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be there, right? So I think that this is what I love about this format is it's really a race for first place because in all honesty, there's no difference between second and eight. You definitely want to make top eight at a minimum, right? But if you get that first place spot, you're headed all the way to the big show coming up on the 5th of April. So mark your calendars, guys. We're going to have eight teams coming in from the prelims. Uh, one team that is that, that qualifier winner today. And then seven more invited teams, DK. Oh, and I mean, the names just keep on stacking up as we progress further and further through this event. Of course, the team's also playing for that lion's share of $500,000. That's a lot of cheddar there. Half a million dollars on the line as these teams go hashtag beyond the top. So, guys, it is going to be one heck of a show here. You can see one more time. This is where the breakdown is. Uh, the prelims are going to actually see some of the partnership teams coming in for the first time as well, DK. Oh, yes. I think this is going to be pretty, pretty interesting. I mean, we've got so many strong teams already represented within the partnership teams. And I mean, adding them onto the main event potentially as well. I mean, this is just going to be such a crazy event. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So uh, I, if I'm one of these names on the list, I definitely want to get that first place. But it's going to be hard because there are some big names here <laughs> in the qualifiers. And for anybody that's been keeping up or hasn't been under a rock lately... It's all going to be Team Falcons, baby. That's going to be the big eyes on the prize that we're going to keep an eye on here because, man, dude, this is one heck of a squad if you want to break that down. Yeah, it is going to be a, a, an interesting one, definitely, to see what the teams are going to be doing. But, of course, as we know, right, they are going to be playing for a share of that prize pool. The qualifiers alone is broken down into $64,000. We've got the prelims worth a little bit more, but it's the main event that the teams are going to be chasing, right, to lock in all that bank as much as they can find. Yeah, and basically all those teams are going to be just trying to get this these points on the board, right? A winner, winner, chicken dinner is going to get you 10 points. 9th through 16th is going to get you the goose egg. So uh, really heavy on the eliminations here. Uh, but if you look at those prize pools, you know, divided up between, you know, now the qualifiers and the prelims, that share of the prize pool is going to the teams that don't make it right mm. so you really want to make sure that you just keep on trying to punch your ticket so you can get that big share of that prize pool come finals times and you can see these are the four teams uh well i mean team falcons <laughs> if you just look at that roster is insane and for those of you guys that don't recognize those names that's right that is the x stalwart esports team the second place qualifying team <laughs> in the global championships last year so uh this is the team to beat obviously by by a hefty margin 
<laughs> I mean, talk about setting the standard pretty dang high, right? Going up a team that played PMGC, placing second, that is some pretty high stakes. But of course, we've got even more teams coming through, right? You can see Rook Esports also being represented here. We got the high fives. We got Gizmo making their way through the Royals of War. So a few interesting names, and I'm pretty excited to see what these teams are going to be bringing to the battlefield. Yeah, me too, because, I mean, they, they want to make it straight to that finals. It's going to be really tough to go through those prelims coming up because we got a lot of those teams. The partnership squad's going to come in, and that skill cap is only going to get higher and higher and higher. Here's four more squads we got coming up. I see quite a few Brazilian team names that are mighty familiar. You got Intense Game there, Inco Gaming as well. Um, these squads, they've had a, quite a few roster swaps here. So mm -hmm. um, they've been... They've been faltering quite a bit in the past, but, uh, you know, hopefully we could see them return to Might here in 2024. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about the roster swaps, right? Money makers, right? The, you, those names look familiar. We've seen them in several other teams, and it's good to see, like, you know, a bit of a mishmash of, of teams grouping up to see what they can accomplish themselves. Of course, moving on, we've got Hora Esports also that's going to be represented here. We've got the, the Zebra Master Squad rolling in alongside the Invictus team, as well as Faction Brazil. Oh, yeah. Big names here. And, man, I'll tell you what. During the qualifiers, we saw some big squads not even make it to this spot here. So these guys have just been working tirelessly to get to this point. And here's the schedule that we're going to be playing today. That's right. We're starting off in Sandhawk, baby. So we're going to go straight <laughs> to the jungle. I mean, it, it doesn't get any hotter than that. And then we're going to go three Ar three Arangels and two Miramars after that. I kind of like this format mm. because it gets it lets teams adapt to the map a bit you know you're not having to switch back and forth so it's going to be a true testament to see who deserves that prelim spot i mean talk about stepping it up right starting on the smaller map out of the three then working your way up into a little bit of that desert action i think it is going to be a hot and sweaty day while we get to the end of it but first off of course it is going to be that rumble in the jungle to see what the teams are going to be bringing in and just looking at the players you can see them now just trying to get that focus locked in. Oh, you see the knuckles are cracking. You see players staring back and forth. And look at that squad right there. These, these guys are just looking calm and relaxed, <laughs> ready to go here today because they know that they they got this. And as far as for those teams that you guys didn't see during the, the uh, qualifying matches, we did see Team Falcons end up the top team in their group. So they ended up with the most points. Uh, a lot of these squads have had some time to be able to research each other. They know their drop locations. They know what's up. But at the same time, this is the first time we're seeing this group go together at all, DK. So yeah. it's going to be really important, I think, this first match to set the tone for the rest of the day. Yeah, and I think it's no better map other than doing it on Sanok, right? So you got to get up close and personal, maybe even a little bit sweaty. I mean, these teams, these players, they are sitting opposite each other. So I think that just adds to somewhat of the pressure that they are going to be experiencing here. But of course, look at this, you know, it's it's all chill. It's all chill back in Brazil. You can just see every, every single player is just like, hey, play it cool. Play it cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not nervous. I'm, I'm fine. I'm ready to do this. I mean, it's this is tough. I mean... The hardest part about this tournament, or at least this qualifier finals, is that it's only one day, right? Mm. So there's no, you know, multiple weeks to get used to other squads. It's really just time to put up or shut up for these squads. And that's hard. That is really hard here. I'm going to ask you this question. In this scenario, I want I want you to see if you can just pretend to put your coach hat on for me, DK. Okay? Mm. So we got Coach DK <laughs> here. If you're the one of these teams... And you know that these other squads are nervous. Do you think you tell them to play aggressive off the rip to take advantage of these nervous squads? Or should they just play it calculated, considering that it's it's really only six matches that's going to decide your future? I mean, I would lean a little bit more onto the aggressive side, right? I, you might as well just capitalize on the available opportunity. If you know uh, the team sitting across from you might be feeling a little bit of those nerves, go out and get it, right? Because there's a great opportunity to try and capitalize on it. As you've said, six matches, right? It's going to be make or break. Whatever you miss, that is not necessarily an opportunity that you'll be able to recuperate. 100%. I got to agree with that. I think especially the fact that we're going into Sandhawk, which is an aggressive map already as it is, right? You got to make sure that gun skills warmed up and starting off strong in Sandhawk. Oh my gosh, is that going to be just like a breath of fresh air going into the rest of the day having those points on top is going to be huge so i think that's what a lot of these squads should try to attempt right it's really just 
press. Just keep the pressure up. Keep the pressure mm. up and just start strong. I mean, I think consistency is going to be key here. So there is a lot of opportunity. As you've said, right, the teams, they've had a bit of an opportunity to research the opponents, get a good feel for what they could be expecting to come through here. But as we've seen time and time again, making your way through the different stages of qualification, teams tend to change the way that they play. So I think today mm -hmm. is going to be a super interesting one, having the top squads from both groups now having to bash it out. Yeah, I mean, they don't really have that, you know, experience playing this entire group together. It's their first time really playing um, as a squad. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. And, you know, the fact that we're starting off in the jungle, I, I think that the fact that it's only one Sandhawk today, I think you can play a little bit riskier at the start, mm. you know, because you got three Erangels, you got two Miramars. That'll allow you to kind of just adapt and get used to what's going on. At the same time, man, going out early is going to be tough because then your fingers are going to be cold going into that first Darren Gale. So uh, I really wonder what's going through the minds of these IGLs as it looks like we're getting uh, these players are getting ready to go here soon. Yeah, they're getting ready to rumble. So there is going to be a golden opportunity just waiting around the bend for someone. But speaking about someone, right? I'm looking at that team in the top right corner. MM. Okay. Right. Mm. The Money Makers. The money Makers. Yeah. Good name. I <laughs> I want to see. I want to see what heat they're gonna be bringing to this jungle. Oh, I do as well. As we get started for the first match of the day, we're going into Sandhawk, baby. Players are locked and loaded in the plane, and we're getting ready to start dropping here as we start seeing squads already head out the plane and get going. Let's get it going here. I'm excited. Well, Jinx, I gotta say though, this is this is looking like a very decent start though, coming out of here. I mean, the flight path nice and central. The teams, as it is on Sandhawk, can pretty much access just about any point that they would wish to get themselves situated. So I'm curious to see if we're gonna have any potential hot drops maybe coming in, looking into our usual suspects, like uh, up into Paradise Resort, maybe a little bit over here into the boot camp, right? So expecting oh, Lobster maybe to get hot. Oh, well, you know what? I doubt that because guess who's there? It's Team Falcons, right? Team Falcons <laughs> dropping dead center. And I did say it'd be great to play aggressive, but not even I'm stupid enough to try to hot drop this squad right now. Uh, and, you know, that's what's so huge is it's there's a big, big mental factor inside of PUBG Mobile Esports. Uh, for as long as I've been a part of this game, it, it's so huge. And, you know, the great part about dominating you know, the qualifying positions and just being such a strong name team, you create that fear surrounding you, right? Mm. And when you're in a game where, ooh, look at that first zone. We'll get into that in a second. But we're looking at a game where tenths of a second matter, right? If you delay yeah. even a little bit, your whole squad could be wiped out. So if you're Team Falcons coming into this, and it, or if you're in a different team, and you knock a player from Team Falcons and you realize that, hey, this is that squad after you maybe get a thirst one or maybe they thirst you, you're going to be like, oh, it's Falcons. You know, oh my gosh, be careful. <laughs> and that little hesitation is all it takes for them to capitalize on you. And this squad, they do not mess around. If they see even a little bit of gap, they're going to go ahead and jump right over it. I mean, they've got the they've got the confidence, right? They showed that all the way back in PMGC. So I think a lot of that prowess is going to pull through into how they're going to be performing out on the battlefield. And as we said before, right, they know what's at stake. There's that top spot that's going to be taking them straight into the main event. And well, two to ninth place is going to be yet another battle, even more opportunity just working their way through the prelim. So yeah, definitely going to aim for the top slot, yeah. Absolutely. We got a nice northern circle here. Uh, that's going to be a little bit tough for the likes of a tense game who who landed on that that northwestern island. So they're going to have to start really hurrying up and going here to get across that bridge. And it's going to be tough because there's already quite a few teams gatekeeping that position. Well, let's see if anyone is going to maybe be able to slide on through. I think another interesting spot here is this what we are seeing with the, the hi fives. Um, nice presence that they've got up in towards Paradise. I don't really see anybody looking to contest just yet. So I think this this buys them quite a bit of an opportunity, right? They can get themselves properly set it up, get some good gear going here, and then once we see where the next phase is going to be taking us, they can make that call. Yes, they can. So let's see what call they're going to make. So right now we're in that looting phase, 
And this is definitely the calm before the storm. So no hot drops, and that is what you want to avoid at all costs. Um, what I do want to see is I want to see some rotation camps. I want to see some teams get looted up, try to be able to get into position to camp some of these teams on their way in. And we're starting to see that happen. We see Falcons already, you know, trying to get up and going and leaving boot camp as soon as possible because they know they got to get to that northern circle pretty pretty quickly here now we do have some teams all the way on the south side they're gonna have to make that rotation on up and you can see them just being very very patient right now nobody wants to go out first mm. yeah i think it would be it would sting a little bit being the first team to get the ticket punched and i mean uh definitely gonna try and play it for the long game so i'm curious to see if anyone's gonna potentially try and maybe rotate up towards those northern sides i mean looking at gizmo that we have all the way on that far western edge They've got pretty decent access, at least to the immediate bridge, and then maybe rotation up into Cal. Mm, okay, well, let's see what the play is going to be. We're starting to see just some teams trying to get some intel here. Falcons are going to go ahead and drive on away, and it looks like they're going to be able to make that rotation safe. So no worries on their end, as this is definitely that calm before the storm. I do like seeing this kind of gameplay because... Every single time we get to a global stage, this is the place to look at. So uh, there's teams, players from all around the world just glued to their screens right now, trying to learn from some of these guys here because this is truly the best of the best going at it. And I also like the fact that we have such a such a strong Brazilian presence here. I mean, yeah, sure, it is happening in Brazil, but still just looking at, you know, as you've said, players from around the, the around the globe participating in it. And I think this is also a good opportunity for a few of these teams really to kind of measure themselves against a team like the Falcons, for instance, right, to see how they'd be able to cope. And, you know, maybe they could load a few strats along the way as well. Yeah, you know, Brazil is looking to finally put that belt around them, right? That global championship belt. And, you know, they've been able to secure so many different positions and top placements in almost every single region. But that PMGC is where it can get just harder and harder as we're looking at the first battle here. Moneymakers on the push. Insanity Esports on the defend. A nice thirst there. Here comes Silence trying to get the second knock. Barely misses it. Oh, no. Moneymakers quickly just trying to patch themselves up. Talent, though, getting picked up. Beautiful S12K hit. Up comes Biscay. Risky play, and that ah. is a clean wipe, though. Wow. Then that is the first squad wipe here for our first global event of the year. And it's going to be Moneymakers. You were talking about this team earlier. They do lose one, but heck, picking up four points at the start. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, it's going to feel pretty, pretty nice at this point. So uh, it does set the, the, the, the standard or the bar, at least to some extent. But of course, you still got to look what's happening over on towards this western side of the zone as well. And this is where we've got a nice little bit of a lineup, right? We've got Gizmo slowly just creeping their way on forward. And as you can see, Bro trying to see if there's maybe a bit of opportunity across into the compound. 100 percent. So you can see them on the move a little bit. Every single team saw that. That finish there. So we're down to 15 teams looking to continue on here. I like the fact that we did see that battle early because Sandhawk is one of those matches that's just so unpredictable, right? The zones move so quickly. And if you just get in the wrong position, no matter how good you are, there's nothing you could do. I mean, it's, it's so difficult to run in the open against, you know, 16 teams in front of you just blazing shots. So... You know, I think the fact that you could just really hustle and try to get those early eliminations just to kind of hedge your bets is definitely the right mm. strategy. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I mean, especially on a map like Sanok, you've got to try and hustle as best you can, right? I mean, things can go south really fast on this game. So you got to try and bring up as much as you can. I mean, even looking at Insanity Esports, at least they went out with a point, right? They got that Elam, so it counts. They're not going to be sitting with a donut or a bubble on that leaderboard. And now... Hopefully, they can bounce back in the remaining matches of today. But first up is going to be down to where this next phase is going to be taking us. Yes. So let's see where it's going to go here. As this first, as we're now in stage two, zone will be closing in one minute. Invictus team looking to get on the move here. Trying to press up really, really close on the top. This is in Cal. And let's see. Oh, the DBSs are out. Locked and loaded. Seven with a nice little shot there. Ooh, gets... Gets popped in return. 
trying to get this initial first knock, and he gets it. Ooh, well, that was a quick response coming through, but Inko not exactly out of the woods just yet. Still has quite a bit of work to do. Here we go, Nene Bede now. Trying to knock on the door. Try to see if they can find the opening, but for Nene, this is a very risky play. Oh, super low on the HP, but Nunez comes in clutch. Beautifully done there, and uh oh we're gonna see Martinez try to be able to throw that nade off. Doesn't get it in time. His whole team's down. I think he's gonna try and make a make a play here. He's in a 1v1 situation. He goes for the push, trying to get those pre-fires with that DBS. Oh, great play from Inko, realizing, hey, we got one isolated player. Let's not try to get into a 1v1, but he, they do it anyway. And they lose a player pretty needlessly, at least in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that was a good play coming through from Vitali. Uh, just closing that one up, of course, securing their second Elam. But as you've said, yes, they did lose a player in exchange. Sometimes uh, you just got to pay the toll, I guess. I don't know about that one because, you know, I think Inko did a great player because we saw we saw a potential 1v1 happening and that player instantly realized like, hey, there's only one left. Let me just back off. We'll all push together and we'll get him 4v1. But it, maybe there was a little miscommunication as, you know, they end up having one player go in anyway and they lose him right there. But you know what? They still got the squad wipe, so good for them as we're seeing the Edge of Paradise Resort get finished out. Man, a lot of teams are going out here early. <laughs> I mean, it's called Paradise for a reason. So, uh, yeah, there's still, I think, a little bit of that sweaty play that's going to be cooking down in towards that southern side. But speaking about the south, the south floor, I mean, we've got the players here from Ruch also trying to pick up a little bit of the trade, going up against the Zebra Masters. Ooh, Atsu getting taken right on down. Let's see whether or not Zebra can line this one up. Maybe even get a quick finish on Ruch. Who was the bank? Open. Looks like it is. Oh, actually, it isn't. Okay, so it doesn't get that finish, but goes and gets that knock there. And, oh, man, it's so difficult to be inside the building in this position because you know you're going to get so much utility thrown at you. It's really, really tough. So Zebra Master definitely have the edge here, but they don't want to take too long. The longer this fight goes on, the bigger chance of third party's coming. Yep, now it's going to be the opportunity to push, push, and I'm pretty sure that Ruch is expecting that kind of play to come through from the Zebra Master. So I like the spread. A little bit of the awareness coming through here. Ooh, Ooh take off. Good nade. But now, are they going to be able to find that last bit? I mean, looking at Zebra, right? They just chilling. They just taking their time. Yeah, they're taking their time here, but they're out in the open and not in a very safe spot. They're luckily that they're so far on that edge. That no oh with this zone shift though it can get hit it can get dangerous. So I think if you're zebra, yeah, you can see them on the move looking to finish this out sooner than later. Well now it's hit. all still down to the final push though. I mean we also did see the death wolves uh, getting sent away. Oh come on. Come on. It's so it's so oh. close. Boy. Oh, <laughs> right. oh, oh, he gets one. He might get the thirst. He does. Oh. oh, and we're seeing this happen quite a bit, DK, right? Where we mm. see a player pretty much all done and uh, looks done for, but is able to steal a quick elimination before he goes out. I mean, it's all about timing, right? You might get you might get the first initial few shots, but if you find yourself in a slightly vulnerable position going up against these teams, I mean, you know what's coming your way. For sure. I think that once these teams are fully like warmed up, you know, we're not going to see those mistakes where players are getting lost like that. But, you know, the problem is, is that you only have six matches today, right? And it's going to decide whether you keep on going towards that big prize pool or you go home. And that is not what a lot of these players have worked so hard for here. As we are seeing Bold in a pretty good position here in the on the edge of the map. Yeah, I mean, quite quite some distance out into the blue, but I mean, it's still stage three, so the blue's not going to hurt all that much just yet. But they do have, of course, the players there from uh, uh, Hurrah, just positioned up ahead. Faction Brazil, though, they're going to be camping out these compounds. Great opportunity up on towards Gizmo. Let's see, is the follow through going to be there? Hoping for just one of those pixels to be out of place. I think if you're Gizmo, you do not want to open up this opportunity for a knock. I think play it safely, try to get some angles. Ooh, that peak was so dangerous. It's just not worth it at this point. They're on the edge of the circle. You know they're coming anyway. So I think just suppress a fire, wait for that zone to come on over, and you'll be good to go. And look at this. Falcons on the buildings in a excellent spot. They have so much vision, and they are just starting to lay down the law here in the first map. I think they saw the, the hashtag, you know, uh, go beyond the top. And that's why they got mm. themselves on the roof, trying to see just how far they can actually take it. But in the meanwhile, 
We do have a few of those casualties now starting to line on up. Got to say, Faction Brazil, though, is still looking nice and steady. Not such a big fight over on towards the edge of the zone here, but I definitely, I think there's a lot of ground for them to try and make up here. Yeah, let's see how they decide to do it here. Is this stage three can definitely start to spice things up. Stage four, though, is where it's just an all-out war. Ooh, ooh, okay, there we go. I mean, this is what I was talking about. Gizmo just leaving themselves out a little bit too open. You know, in this kind of position, a team like Faction Brazil is desperate, right? They need that knock mm. to be able to get, you know, a shot open here. So if you're Gizmo, you have to be extra, extra careful. Just let the zone play it out. But well, getting that one player knock is going to make things difficult. As we head on back over to Paradise, though, we see intense game. Looking to do some gatekeeping, but no. Well, this next zone, they should still be in, so they can definitely wait a little bit. And I think that's part of the process, uh, working your way through Paradise. There's so many nooks and crannies to just hide in and gatekeep teams as they start pushing forward. I think there's going to be a lot of pressure now, especially looking at uh, the players from Gizmo and, of course, um, you know, Faction Brazil. They have to try and find a way forward. For Gizmo, the big threat is going to come through from Falcons just lurking on the edge of that zone. Mm, you can see Faction Brazil. Yeah, they were able to make it out alive, and they're going to start trying to creep through Paradise here. And it looks like they do have a little bit of an angle to sneak their way in. Meanwhile, Zebra Master down to two. They do have four eliminations, so that's going to help a little bit. But they know that's not going to be enough, because at the end of the day, we're looking for that first place team. Because if you are first place at the end of the day, you're going to get an automatic golden ticket to the finals. And with the rosters that are going to be coming up here, that is mm. that is what I want. I do not even <laughs> want to deal with the prelims at all because it's going to be all-out war. I mean, unfortunately, we have to see what the prelims have in store for us, right? We are going to be adding even more in, in, amazing teams into the mix. But, uh, yeah, the stakes are going to be pretty, pretty high for whoever makes it through. But for now, it seems like... We have a little bit of that silence now creeping oh, yeah. up into Sanok. I mean, good play coming through here from Faction. Slowly just pushing in, clearing compound by compound as they push up. Maybe even getting a little bit of that parkour action going here. But this mm -hmm. could be a golden opportunity onto high fives now. Yeah, you can see them set up for the gatekeep. They're very spread out, though. Not in really good positions to support each other. So that's going to be tough. They got to play this carefully. That's why you see them kind of playing very kind of hidden positions where they can leave. But not in the in the spots where they're at, they can't get knocked at all. Yeah, I like that from Dream. He realizes that, you know what? It's just not worth it. Yep, almost gets shot in the back and leaves perfectly on time. Great instincts. Uh-oh. So we might see another player get knocked. And he does. And this is what I was talking about. Oh, actually, great support through the wall. Smokey with, with a perfect shot. I mean, you got to love the plays, though. Monkey just on the point with that play. Now it's up to Snowix and Dream to see if they can survive. Well, they do find yet another pickup. And now this is where Faction Brazil is going to be feeding all that pressure, right? It's going to be a 2v4. Ah. Scratch that. It's going to be eight Elims going straight to the high fives. Wow. High fives doing a great job of putting control there in Paradise Resort. They really collapse on Faction Brazil. They got that one knock, but weren't able to make it happen. So... Some excellent, excellent knocks here from Hi-Fi. Says the, the next zone does go on up here, and they are going to have to leave Paradise. Mm -hmm. Got to give it up. Got to give it up, but not before going through quite an intense fight. Right, you can see Zeus. Ooh. Nice shot. Quick pickup, oh. Lord. <laughs> Man, Hi-Fi. So good with those return knocks instantly. And where's the rest of Intense Game? Yeah, they're going to have to come and collapse and take this team out. Good thing for high fives though. These guys are warmed up and ready to go with eight eliminations as they're trying to sneak some shots through those elephant legs there. But not able to find the angles. So, looks like... Man, high fives doing a great job here. Getting those knocks, returns, pickups quickly. And Intense Game doesn't seem to have that same level of synergy because these guys are still spread out. They're going to lose a player now. Ooh. Let's see whether or not... It is maybe a little bit of hope here. Now left for high fives. I mean, starting to move, they have no, they don't have all that much choice really, because as we can see, the zone is going to be closing up in less than a minute. But I think there's even more pressure getting added on, right? Falcons, they're getting closer. Zebra Master, they're getting closer. So whatever high fives are going to look to do, they really need to get to it right now. Oh my gosh, Rafa needs to get it done here, but you're so right as we see Falcon 
putting so much pressure onto Intense Game, getting a bunch of knocks from their backs. And now it's just Rafa. Oh, that nade should do it though. Oh, it's a stun! He hits a headshot <laughs> with the DBS some way, somehow. But it is not enough as High Pfizer continue to steamroll players here on the edge. Definitely opting for those eliminations. Oh, I wonder if we're going to see a player pick up and, uh, you know, throw them on your shoulders and run into this circle because I, somehow this team is still has everyone up. Well, I mean, this is a fight that I've been wanting to see. Moneymakers going up against Team Falcons. Both teams now fighting for possession of at least that Western Edge, but the zone is going to move up. So this is going to force, well, the Moneymakers to make a very difficult choice. They have to move in. Oh, but Biske taking so many hits now to the oh face. It's going to be up to top to try and close it up. And there it is. Falcons swoop in for yet more eliminations. I mean, these guys are ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, look at the confidence, right? Literally mm -hmm. running out in the open, even though we see one of the players from Moneymakers has the cover with the rock, it doesn't matter. Top realizes, hey, we have to finish this here and now. We got to clear this side out. I don't care. I'm running out in the open and getting it done. That's exactly is what happens. If you see smoke now on the defense here, DBSs are out in that close quarters combat. They're running a 2-1 split. Two in the front, one in the back, and it did not work out as their remaining player is going to have to try to just hide replacement. Well, they're getting smoked, right? That's what happened. <laughs> so we're all right there. Yeah, we're going to say goodbye to Sky pretty soon. Now it's up to no fear. And I think this is where they really got to prove their worth, right? The name suggests that uh, we are going to be seeing some pretty insane plays, but that is yet to be seen. Meanwhile, it's still going to be down towards the southern side, right? Zebra, and of course, then the players from the high is now looking to score even more points. Yes, they are, as now we are reaching the top four here for the first game of the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil. So much is on the line, only one day of play. For anybody that's just tuning in, it's only six matches. This is match number one. High Fives have been just dominating this match so far. Ten eliminations to their name and still have their entire squad up. Now they're going to start the push again. And look at this. They have the numbers here. They got that DBS out. Now it's all about just execution. One well-placed nade, one well -placed nade from the other team could wreak disaster. And they get the circle here. So they got to get this finished Ooh. out quick. I mean, it's now or never, right? They're going to try and just lock it up. But of course, the Falcons are going to come knocking on the door. At least for the time being, Falcons taking a very wide spread, trying to cover as many different angles as they do ascend down onto the zone. But this is where the pressure comes for a team like Zebra Master as well as the High Fives. But I mean, smoking, they just chilling up on the north. They also still have to relocate. Okay, I think that now High Fives need to just turtle it up. I think they need to see, look at Zebra Master and say, hey guys, you know, we got the Falcons on this side. We need to worry about them and we'll deal with each other later at this point. But they're starting to get pushed as well. This could be perfect opportunity for Team Falcons to start this push because look at this, High Fives having an absolute all-out war and the Falcons are just watching this smiling as just chaos is happening inside these buildings. High Fives are hurt. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be difficult to contest the amount of elims that they've already been able to secure so far, but it does seem like Zebra Master are going to go do a little bit of cleanup in aisle four as they now make their way through the compounds, looking for a few cheeky pickups, but Falcons still winging it, still holding on to the edge of zone, and they're not going to relent whatsoever. Oh my gosh, I was about to say, speaking of cleanups, Team Falcons are licking their beaks right now, just ready to <laughs> pick at these Zebra Masters. Uh, they have a full squad spread out. Hey, don't count out Monkey, though, right? They're mm. on that edge. I mean, he's dangerous. You know, if he, if they, if Team Falcons, I don't think realize that he's in that position at all. I think they think the entire squad is in there. You can see them checking just to be sure, but if they run on the open... Monkey could definitely come out from that off angle and disrupt them big time. So they got to play this carefully. Ooh, great nade, though. Mm -hmm. That hurt. Uh, yep, yeah, that's gonna. That's a very uncomfortable tickle that's come through on that one. But now, of course, Icy still trying to do the due diligence here, just trying to smoke it up. Him? Does he know he's there? Mm. Not yet. Not yet. No, Zed also uh -oh. just uh -oh. gonna be oh, looking. Got him. Ooh, come on. <laughs> he, he had. They have to know he's there. Yeah, they have to know. They're, if not, then they got that fifth sense going. You can see them starting to push out. Now, uh oh, he does go down. So that's high fives out. Here we go. Top two teams. Falcons do go down, though. It's a 2v1 out in the open. He's going to have to hit some crazy shots. But guess who's on top, baby? It's Team Falcons 
winning the first match of the day the most hype squad coming into this second place in the global championships they're on that new roster and ready to go beyond the top here i, I just gotta ask you one thing right what, what sound does a falcon make <laughs> <laughs> or it's actually not good guys we're like ah, whatever right but you know what yeah. i'll tell you what whatever sound <laughs> every single team in the lobby heard it because yeah. i mean it, it's just so crazy that not only do they win the first game but it's on sandhawk which is not mm. even necessarily like their most crazy map right yeah uh, so for them to start off with not just a chicken dinner but a 14 elimination mm. chicken dinner oof i mean these other teams are gonna pretty much have to rally together to take these this guys down at this point yeah yeah, I mean, talk about marking your territory, right? That is exactly what the Falcons did. They just threw feathers all over the place. They claimed the uh, the spot, right? They said, Sadok is ours for the taking. And it's no surprise, really, to see them perform like this, right? We did see them back in PMGC also performing exceptionally well when it came to the map of Sadok. So, yeah, I'm super excited uh, as, as for the outcome of this game. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see these next five games coming up because, like I said earlier, there's no real difference between second and and eighth place right you want to definitely make it into top eight so you could guarantee your spot in the future towards mm -hmm. the prelims right but it that first place gets you that direct invite to the finals so it's gonna be interesting to see because these teams know right where team falcons like to go and it's gonna be interesting to see where they opt to really put themselves but you know what guys we're gonna be right back after this short break don't go nowhere And we're back here as we got the highlights so we can see how this game <laughs> went down. Uh, and you can see the Bunny Makers getting some great shots. It was beautifully done. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, these, this Falcon squad, they are ready, locked, and ready to go. Yeah, but I gotta say, this was a really good start, though. First match of the day, everybody turning up with the aggression. We did see so, so much carnage coming through here. And I, I mean, you said it before, right? Good warm up. Teams really getting those fingers all nimble and ready to rumble. So, yeah, expecting some pretty intense gameplay to come further as we progress onwards. But High Fives, really good possession that they had up in Paradise. Oh, yes, they did, dude. The real me highlights really showing what they can get done, especially against intense game. They, it's so crazy to see them last all the way to the end as a four man squad. Yeah, they got taken out, but that's because they were in the most dominant position, just getting shot from every single way. So uh, I think they definitely need to hold their heads up high and just get ready to start some good old Erangels coming up soon. Mm hmm. I mean, we've got a, a heavy dose of your angle coming through here today. T uh, three matches back to back. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity to bring in quite a bit of change. Oh, yes, indeed. So you can see here the damage that was done. Oh, my goodness. Mm. 2,500 damage, 14 eliminations. High fives were definitely working for it. They got that dozen, which is a great game, right? Um, and the way that this format is, I can't stress it enough, right? It's all about first place. So they could definitely not let off the pedal at all coming up. Yeah, I mean, the pressure is definitely going to be on. So good starting play here for the Falcons. I mean, high fives, as you said, but also then we look at Moneymakers, right? Securing themselves those eight eliminations. Zebra Master also bringing in a really strong presence here, securing themselves uh, those seven eliminations. And I love these damage counters. They are so, so steep. I mean, uh, four teams hitting an excess of a thousand damage. So that already speaks a lot to the aggression that we've seen out on the battlefield. Yes, sir, indeed. It's time to go ahead and see who is going to be that M. Uh, actually, the match rankings here. Let's take a look here as it is going to be yeah, high fives in second place with 17 total points. And it's going to be Team Falcons on top with 24. So I was kind of alluding to it to a little bit earlier, uh, DK, is the fact that, you know, since first place is so desperate, teams are going to know where the Falcons land. So mm. I wonder if at a certain point, a, a bigger stress for multiple squads are going to be to try to take them out so that way they can Oof. still have a chance for that golden ticket what do you think because they're now i mean in my opinion there's a big target mm. on their back yeah i i agree there's i i 100 percent agree with you on that one i mean especially being a team like falcons as you've said right they are a well-known team there's so much footage at looking at how they play where they drop so there's a golden opportunity for teams to try and contest them but i think falcons they also up for the challenge Right, they they they just sitting around and you know almost like 
begging the teams like i dare you push me push me i want yeah. some free elims for sure and honestly um i think you know even trying to get into a fight earlier on can be dangerous because they're just so good but maybe just trying to land near where they land try to take them out on the rotation i know you can mm. i know a lot of these teams did their homework anything to disrupt them and if you could do that earlier on right let's say if you just go into this first aaron gale you know where they drop you camp their rotation and make them second guess themselves right mm. that could disrupt them for the next two matches so I'm interested to see if that will happen. But, you know, at the same time, when you have so much pressure, only five matches left, I wouldn't mm. be surprised if we see every team just kind of stick to what they know. But I think at least having a, a triple Irango lineup is going to provide a golden chance for teams to kind of rectify whatever didn't go exactly according to plan, either in match number one or the first Irango. So there's going to be several opportunities. As we know, of course, the zones are going to go in different places. But uh, I think Irango will definitely be the map in which we see the teams really start to lay a super solid foundation moving through for the rest of the day. 100 percent you can see here the mvp of course it's gonna be none other than t falcon Z getting it done there six eliminations only 53 healing so uh man this guy was just running around having fun at this point as you look at his highlights crazy crazy mm -hmm. shots here <laughs> just coming up on i mean he just went just was chilling and that's the crazy part is we saw like high fives just having to push every single squad and mm. team falcons were just in the perfect position just taking down point after point after point i mean it's gonna be pretty tough competition right uh sanok now done dusted now it's time for a little bit of the bread and butter right that we are going to be taking mm -hmm. a look at and i'm curious to see whether as you suggested right teams are maybe going to try and uh, you know test their luck when it comes to the falcons maybe we could see an early game disruption happening i i want to because honestly i'm mm. so tired of seeing teams just kind of stick to that you know same level of play constantly just doing the same thing over and over when you know what's at stake you have to be able to adapt in my opinion mm. right because you know that hey if we get top eight that's great but we need first place. So if we could do anything we could do to get that little extra edge or make that even a possibility, that would be huge. That would be huge. But yep. you know what, guys? Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back, everybody. Here we go, getting ready for match number two, and we're headed into Erangel. What you said earlier, right? It's the bread and butter of this game, so <laughs> we're gonna really see who deserves that first place spot. But like I said, I want to see things get mixed up a little bit. It's only one day, you know. Mm. There's not a difference in prize pool between second and eighth. It's all about just qualifying, right? The only yep. prize pools yep. given is to those players that don't make it. And that's not a prize pool you want. You want to get that big boy money coming up here soon. So uh, hopefully we see some teams mix it up here soon. Yeah, you definitely don't want to go for the consolation prize. You want to go for the big one. So, uh, yeah, also got to give a big shout out for the Realme 12 Pro. It elevates your photography experience with the 120x Super Zoom and performance in games. There we go. How to be a portrait master. Make it real, baby. Make it real and get ready to go as we get into match number two. Here we go. We can start seeing these teams start to head on out. So we're going to see three of these today and a couple Miramars to finish it off. So you know what? I will say this. I think that teams should definitely go for their tried and true here and now. I think mm. if you... Um, if you're feeling a little bit spicy, maybe try to camp the Falcons rotation. Maybe. If you're nearby. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Um, but I think right now, you just try to get those consistent points. Get a feel for what everything's going on. Um, if the Falcons do well in this game, I think that you're going to have to try and stop them sooner than later. Yeah, I, th I have to agree with you on that. It's going to be your cue, right? I mean, if you've mm. ever wondered when would be the right time to step up, uh, yeah, it would be especially after the Falcons if they have a good game here. Speaking about good game, though, um, insanity happening right here in the early game. First Elam already secured. You can see Marlon not wasting a single moment. Surprising enough, though, the zone actually relatively spread out. Sure, there is a little bit of contention over here up in towards Razak, but uh, looking at the rest of the spread, I mean, the team's pretty well situated. Uh, yes, they are. So let's see exactly. Well, we're going to start seeing some knocks already, and that's going to be all of the hi fi. So this is going to be up in Roshawk here. Let's see how they opt to play this one. Silence is stuck at that tree. Like the, he's going to try to get this nade off. If he gets it, it'll be huge. And it does come on in, taps him up a little bit. That is going to allow him to be able to push up to this building. And here we go. It is a 2v2. Extremely undiluted. This is really tough fight here. He's got to have to hit all these shots. One shotgun blast and he's gone. Oh. But I think this is a super important play, though, for Insanity, right? They had a little bit of a bumpy start over on Sanox, so oh. this is the opportunity. Ooh. Ooh. I was to about to claim. Yeah. I saw that push and I was, and I just like, I closed my eyes for a second and I, was, I started, <laughs> you know, saying goodbye. Goodbye, because I saw that <laughs> shotgun. There's not much you can do when you don't have a vest like that. So, yeah, I like the fact that, you know, Insanity are staying true to their name. They're just, like, pushing, playing aggressive. <laughs> but this is going to be two games back-to-back -back where you go out mm -hmm. really early. So, um, I think after this, you definitely got to have to calm things down a little bit and put some points on the board. Well, and uh, I mean, they are going up against a, a pretty aggressive team, as we saw in Sanon, right? hi fi is coming through with those 12 Elums, so they've already set quite a bit of a standard for themselves. Insanity, pretty much on par with what we had over on Sanok, but now, are they going to be able to kind of wiggle themselves out of the situation, right? I want to see all of them just try and apply as much pressure as they can onto Dream and Monkey. Hopefully, they could secure themselves those, those Elums and even more playtime here. Yeah, let's see what let's see what the plan is. Is they're definitely on the move, and you can see Dream. Uh oh, trying to catch some angles. Yeah, Insanity with that knock, it's gonna be pretty huge here. They go for the push, Ooh. and again that pump shotgun, just destroying the dreams of Insanity for now. They're gonna have to get this knock though really quickly. He's gonna go for the open hardcore pre-fire, 
But high fives! That Ooh. pump shotgun is just too deadly. Oh. Well, oh, <laughs> a little taste of your own medicine, huh? How's that feel? Oh, I mean, the best response to the shotty is yet another shotty to come on through, but it's not over just yet. Oh, well, now it is. Beautiful throw there from Snowix. Who threaded the needle. That was beautiful indeed. So, um, a beautiful play. Unfortunately, going to lose two in the process. I wonder if Inko is going to push this. Mm. They could. They definitely could, but I think that... This is a, this is always a difficult push because you know you're going wide in the open. You don't have a lot of intel. You know what's at stake, and uh, it looks like it is only Vitaly here in this position. So yeah, I think he's just gonna hold it and try to see if he can sneak a shot off. Well, it doesn't seem like the rest of Inko are gonna be looking to reinforce just yet. We do see something on the horizon coming through from that southern side. So maybe Vitaly is just gonna be waiting for reinforcements, a little bit of that backup mm -hmm. before they yeah, look they to come. apply the extra pressure. Yeah, here they come, and here they are. And uh, if they were paying attention to the feed, which I know they are, there's going to be two players only left for high fives. And if they realize that, I will not be shocked if they push this. Honestly, they really need to, right? Any point that you mm. can get is going to be huge. They know exactly where he is, especially on that back bunker. Yeah, here they come. Inko looking to take advantage of this play. And this is why we talk about trying to avoid, avoid those initial like head-on fights as much as you can. Because if you lose a couple players... You're going to get third party and take it out. And high fives, we saw them, right? Just a real scrappy team able to kind of make it out of really tough situations. This one's looking really bad. And I think that's why we see Snowwicks already on the run. Well, I mean, either on the run or uh, a cheeky reposition. Because looking at where Snowix is going, I, I think that could actually afford them quite an opportunity here. While Monkey, of course, is going to be looking to distract Inko as they push in. But now it's going to be go time. Monkey now has to bear all... As Inko, they just got to break down doors and rush on in. You know what? I guarantee you, Monkey is telling him, I'm safe. Come to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Monkey's like, I'm safe, dude. Come here. Help me out. I got him. You know, No, he's not. He's saying, run for your life, bro. <laughs> oh! Oh, no, he did say I got him. He did say it. He said, come on down. Oh, he gets knocked. He has to make it happen with a jump shot. Oh, and he gets Ooh. another knock. So huge. Three elimination. Oh, actually, no, Vitaly from the angle. Get some oh. down. Oh, but he does take a couple with him. Heck, I mean, that's the best case scenario, I think, when mm. you know you're going to go out, right? At least get a couple points. <laughs> I mean, that was a beautiful strat, though. I'm not going to lie. I mean, high fives, they stepped it up. Beautiful off angle play coming through there from Slow X, but Vitale, Vitale, Vitale just taking it that extra little bit further. I mean, what a change up that was. And, well, speaking about change ups, we're going to be looking over onto Zebra Master to see if they can maybe bring something in here onto the side, uh, of course, of the opponents, right? We've got even more players just hiding in the wings up ahead, and the pressure keeps on building. Faction Brazil not going to be feeling any heat just yet. Yeah, they are not, but I'll tell you what, man. That was the play so far of the tournament. That 1v3 was beautiful. Uh, and if he was able to get that finish, it could have been, you know, it's solidified as the play of the tournament so far. But you know what? We'll see what happens next. High Fives did go out with six eliminations. So that's pretty good. You know, um, at least to make it into top eight. But that's not mm. going to be good enough for first place. Because we do see Team Falcon still alive and well. So we'll see what's going to happen here. As we're looking at Faction Brazil right next to Pachinki. Trying to... Just hold this position for now. Nice little central zone. So nothing too atypical. Very centralized here on the map. So no surprises here for these teams. But this is where I think the position of a Zebra Master might be a slightly better one that we've got here for Faction Brazil. Because we've got all these high grounds surrounding Faction's current positioning. And I mean, if you look over onto Zebra... They can just peer in all the way from up on that church hill and just bring so much pressure into whoever's going to be looking to contest, especially coming in from this eastern side or western mm -hmm. side. Oh, nice little shift on over towards Gatka. That's going to be an interesting one there. So let's see as the Ted's game are going to get pretty blessed in this position. This could be a good opportunity to put up some good points on the board. Meanwhile, the squad that we're looking at, Team Falcons, right, are all the way near Novo. So they're going to have to push on up. Meanwhile, oh, Faction Brazil just waiting to see which teams are going to try to run out in the open. And that was going to be Zebra Master losing two. That's going to be tough. 
Well, it is going to be a pretty hairy place still to go. As you can see, men are also just hiding that vehicle away. But now, up comes the opportunity for Faction to maybe bring an end to Inko. As you can see, Vitali just rotating on up. But I think this is where we are going to be seeing quite a bit of heat now starting to be drawn up into the lovely Picard up ahead. But here we go. Faction, got to watch these angles, though. Yeah, they gotta watch them, but they're pretty safe here, right? Slaughterhouse is such a great position to hold because, you know, you're surrounded pretty much by all open air. You can see any team pushing at you from any direction. That's why you see them a little bit split up. The only real weak spot is uh, this garage right here. So if that warehouse, if it does get pushed on, they're going to be in trouble. But if they're able to hold it down, I mean, it's a really, really solid position in this map. It's kind of hard to leave, though. <laughs> if the zone does shift in the opposite direction. Yeah, that's going to be one to see, though. I mean, we're still some some ways away from the, our the stage three, so a lot can still happen in the meanwhile. As you can see, Gizmo is starting to spread out. Zebra also now trying to utilize as much of the available space, but uh, looking over onto the place here from Royals of War, they're going to have a little bit of company knocking on their door, potentially. Yeah, right now they're just going to be holding down these blues, staring to the sky and hoping the zone comes to them. I mean, the great part about this place is that, you know, if the zone does shift in any direction, you have a pretty good uh, rotational path to try and at least get there. Um, so they're not in a bad spot yet, but they don't want to move unless they have to. As you can see, B-Bowl just trying to find their best position here. A little bit late to this rotation. Actually, pretty late. They are way on the edge of the circle, so they are still rotating on in. And little do they know that they got uh, the Falcons creeping up behind them. And this could be a strategy for the Falcons. Just knowing that, hey, mm -hmm. you know, we already got so many points in Sandhawk. We know what we're capable of, of. Right now, let's just be consistent. Put some points on the board. Yeah. I mean, no, nothing wrong with a little bit of that shock and all play coming through. But I think a big challenge also then for Be Bold is going to be Ruch. That is going to be applying pressure from on the edge of that zone. You can see Ruch also now starting to push up a little further down towards that southern side. So it actually opens up a great rotational pathway now for the Falcons to get themselves established. Yeah, let's see how they have to play it. Oh, and they get a pretty good solid zone for them too. So they don't really have to go too far. You can see them just trying to get healed up, prepare for their battle, playing it very, very cautiously here. And this is what the advantage of, of having such a strong first game really gives to you, right? You could just kind of just play it out, put some solid points on the board, and just continue to just hold on to that first place for the rest of the day. But Jukes, then talking about holding on, right? I think for, for Smoke, also that, that southern hilltop that we just saw them on, that is also going to allow them quite a bit of a vantage point, especially looking at the, the sheer number of teams we have that are yet to rotate on forward. I mean, speaking of it, here we go. It is going to be hold on, Miyaki <laughs> just packing in some heat. You can see him there trying to hit that car 98 shot out of the vehicle. And meanwhile, we got Myth popping him out. Indeed, you can see them trying to head to that little pipeline right there on the edge of the map. But they are just getting picked apart. And Team Falcons seem to always put themselves in the right place at the right time. Going to go ahead and steal one of those eliminations right there. Actually, yes, they... Or maybe they don't. No, they don't. So I thought they did end up getting that, but it was smoke. Yeah, they try to swoop in, but they just missed the play. Now, it's going to be Miyaki Got up on the hill. Nice bolty shots raining in across the way. I see. Lead him. Ooh, this could be tricky. Come on. Oh. Mm. Buff the bolt actions. Come on. Yeah. We need yeah. it. <laughs> we need that bolt action buff because that would have been so hype if he got that knock there and there. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Meanwhile, you see Top and the Falcons go ahead and start to take that pipeline position. Intense game. We're going to be spreading out right here, just on the side of Gatka. These buildings are a very, very, very strong spot. Because if the zone heads towards Pachinki, you just head right up that hill. Take, you know, disrupt any team that's there. Let's see what happens, though. Where's that next circle going to go? Meanwhile, we do have quite a few teams, and it does look like Falcons, instead of going towards that pipe, are going to head into this outer edge of Pachinki. Oh, they're going to have to really try and blaze their way to get a good foothold moving in here. I mean, I, I got to say, I honestly like the Zorn centering up like this up onto Pachinki, but a quick little trade going on to be bold out in the open. Maiki 
definitely looking to pick up as many pieces as they can. And of course, now Falcons just welcoming B Bold up into the zone. Absolute carnage. All the utilities now starting to fly on forward. But I mean, looking at Falcons here, Jukes, they just chilling, right? Looking so confident on the edge there. Yeah, unfortunately, they did lose two players, so that's going to be pretty tough. Uh, but at the same time, you know, they, they do have some major players still up, top being one of them. Uh, oh, they are going to maybe even get this res off. So I thought that he was gone for sure, but he crawls his way up. Beautiful smoke wall there from Falcons, and they get a very favorable circle shift. So they don't have to move too far. That's going to definitely help them out big time. But all those teams... Uh-oh, you can see them there on that northwestern side are going to have to start pressing up against each other. Yeah. I mean, talk about opportunities. I think Gizmo, they are just so, so primed for whatever the zone is going to be bringing to them. In the meanwhile, Death Wolf, though, knocking on the door, trying to get a beautiful play as they come in onto the plays here from Invictus. But, uh, yeah, Inko also going to get backed up. So, so many teams feeling the pressure, feeling the plays. And with that, we're down to only 12 now remaining. Invictus, I mean, what a quick sweep that was. So fast. And that's perfect, perfect timing there. They definitely wanted to get that done quick. Because, again, look, there's only six seconds left on the clock. And they are still outside of this circle. So, they're going to have to push in here top. Using Blue Zone to his advantage. I love this. He's going to be throwing all that utility there. And he does get that knock. So just apply that pressure. Let the Blue Zone do the work for you. But it's really up to him to gate keep an entire squad. And they're gonna, if they come in one by one, they're not going to stand a chance. They really have to work together here on this push. Yeah. It's going to be safety in numbers at least to some extent. But now it's going to be... David, oh my goodness. Ooh, getting picked up as well. So slowly, Top just hacking away at the side here of B-Bold. I mean, talk about pretty tough position to play. Meanwhile, Moneymakers also going to be feeling the heat. As you can see, Icy taking quite a bit of damage here. Smoke Gaming trying to push in. They want those Ooh. points on board. They do get yet another knock. And Moneymakers now down to a two-piece. Just so much pre-fire here. Smoke do end up losing another player. So here's a, a 2v1 position here on this edge. Myth might even go for the 1v1 though. He does have the high ground. We've got to be careful. Here come those crowd shots. That buggy just doing such a great job of supporting him. And he does get that knock. Ooh. I mean, that was an essential play, though. I mean, especially for the money makers, they were relying on that survivability to happen right there. And unfortunately for them, I mean, Smoke Gaming, right? They just got them out of that hole and sent them right on back. In the meanwhile, looking up on towards the northwestern side of zone, it's going to be the Royals of War trying mm. to get their way into this. But I mean, I like this position here from uh, Hura, right up in Headshot Hills. So many angles to try and play off of. 100%. That's why I love their position is like no matter where the zone goes, they're going to have a path on him. But they're definitely going to have to fight their way through it. And Royals of War, oh, going for the run over. Uh, and it looks like they do end up getting it. And oh, the Wolves in screaming towards the sky right now as there's only one player left and he is done for. So great push there from Royals of War. Yeah. Yep, that's what you gotta do. You gotta get the rush in. Speaking of rushes, though, intense game. Now also gonna try and capitalize on a golden opportunity, but instead it's gonna be Celo to get taken on down. Zeus boy, rough on the rest of the crew. Really gotta watch these angles. But will they be able to secure it in, though? I mean, Rails of War, they just absolutely pumping on the adrenaline. You can see them now just moving all over the place, trying to get these angles secured. Who knows? I'm looking to see this fight now break up between the two. Oh yeah, Tonka looking to drive that truck around and take out some more players, using it to just get some of that, some angles, get some information, trying to play it safe as possible. They are outside of this circle, so they know they have to rotate. But this is that always that this is the hardest part of PUBG Mobile is timing, right? You have to decide mm. when do we decide to, to push into this edge. Do we want to go early? Do we want to go late? And I don't blame them for trying to go late in this position. Intense game with a crazy rotation. Do end up finding a spot safely. Pretty central in the circle. So that's going to work out for now. And then now, meanwhile, Gizmo going to have to make a play here on top. As Intense game got their DVSs out and ready to take this building. Well, they're going to unpack all the Gizmos they have in their bag. As you can see, Bro just trying to clear out that staircase. I mean, this is a tough play, though. Bro... 
they're going to have to make some magic happen here, right? 1v3 up in the compound, the rest of the team just holding up on that hillside. Not quite sure whether or not we are going to see Gizmo, well, have Bro survive this position. In the meanwhile, everybody else still trying to get themselves secured as they move in. Up comes the push, though. Intense. I mean, slowly making progression up the way. Mm, they're gonna try to make a play here bro is gonna come down and just keep disrupting them little by little you saw him place that gas can right there by that door so he placed the gas can right there near that for that door to blow it up in case they do try to push up again meanwhile you got zebra master applying pressure to both of these teams i think if you're an intense game honestly at this point i wouldn't even mind having gizmo on that roof just have him on the roof mm. just focus on everybody else deal with him if the zone shifts because right now you got to worry about just every other player in the wake I mean, even uh, Faction in Brazil also now starting to get involved. As they slowly tap across the way. Uh, their teammate also, um, NTS, also trying to just woo, make up for a bit of ground there. But Zebra Master now getting a play up on towards Zeus Boy. This could be that opening for Bro. But I'm not quite sure if they are aware of what is unfolding down below. Setting out the utilities. Frog going for the pickup. No change up really. Nothing change up. Yeah, this is gonna be it looks like some some good old central gameplay here as we're right in the middle of Pachinki. I do love urban finishes because it just gets so intense here. We're gonna see a lot of teams try to make plays. Wow, Miyaki making it happen there. That's gonna be three eliminations for him. Team Falcon still up. One elimination so far, three players. And that's going to be on that ed other edge of Pachinki. Bro, still up here trying to survive. And uh, Rolls of War now with four. Putting putting some work in here. Oh, actually, but they yeah, have. That is going to be them going out. And so we're going to see nine teams remaining. And here comes the push from Intense Game. Bro, holding down this angle. Trying to make something happen. An intense game. Every time they push, they just lose a player. So it just gets delayed time and time again. Yeah, but I mean, just looking at this whole position here, the rest of the Gizmo team, they're going to have a pretty tough time, I would say, defending if uh, Intense were to maybe make up some ground here. But they still have a little bit of the safety barrier that is coming through from those shots there from Zebra. Of course, the rest of the Gizmo team are going to be focusing their way up on towards the North Star, trying to halt any advances coming through here from Faction Brazil, potentially even the players there from Hura Esports. But still, nothing changing up here with Bro. Now it's going to be intense, pushing up onto the roof. The play is there. The first oh paint is my in. Goodness. Two down. Oh. oh, got him though. They end up taking him out from across the way. So Gizmo able to ruin intense game. And let's see. I think they're going to go and try to for to make that cross and pick him up. Here they come in that buggy, full sending it. This is very risky. And it looks like he does get knocked in the process. And Sometimes you just have to take the sacrifice, and unfortunately, it just became a little bit heavier. Yeah, sometimes you risk it, and you get no risk it at the end. Now, of oh. course, Ruch also still having to push through here, as they are going to be looking now to just inch their way through, sneaking up from that southern side of Pachinki. The rest of the team's pretty focused on all the carnage we've heard now just erupting close towards St. Zorn. But this is where I'm getting a little bit worried, though, looking at a team like Smoke, right, exposed on the edge, and they still have the players from B-Bold yet to move in behind them. Mm, let's see what the play is going to be. As we see Yaki. Oh, oh, nice shots. Quick peek. That's going to be eight eliminations for Smoke Gaming. Good one for them. And now we're going to see the Falcons. They've been creeping their way up ever so slowly, very sneakily, into this Pachinki position due to that zone shift. They do realize that if the zone keeps going in this direction, they're going to probably have to take that church up on top. But at the same time, they have to keep an eye on their back. So their ears are definitely perked and getting ready to go here as we are about to head into Stage 7. Still quite a few teams up here. Yeah. A lot of teams, not a lot of action at the current moment. I see. Got a few nades in hand there. Maybe prepping for a little bit of a surprise play. As you can see, top also just uh, manning them ears. 
But Falcons, as you said, right, inching their way forward, coming through on this eastern side. Still a lot of opposition up ahead. Zebra Master, I mean, they've been just playing such an opportunistic position here. Every time they spot an opportunity, they get up, they lay the shots, they drop back down. So I'm curious to see whether or not anyone's going to be able to maybe just push them out of that building. But maybe the zone could have some other plans for them. Yeah, it's going to be tough, though. They only have two players up, only one elimination. So they are they do have a great position, but they don't really have the players to support it. So I think they're trying to play just very, very quietly here. Just get some consistent points on the board and then come back here for the next one. Because these teams up on top uh, are very, very well set up. Mm. Meanwhile... Yeah, I mean, Horror's going to be one of them. You can see Top trying to get those shots. Uh oh gets beat up quick. Peek back and survives a little bit longer. This next zone, perfect shift for all of these teams, pretty much. So they don't got to move a muscle. It's just some more hurry up and wait. Yeah, unless, unless you're uh, part of the Hura team, right? You still have a little bit of ground to cover moving in from that northern side. I think... Uh, looking at the angle that they are taking to get in here, there's uh, a few limited options, right? They're going to obviously try and play for that church position, as I think that would be a very wise call to make at this point. But looking at uh, Faction Brazil, they're going to look to contest. Hugo from Gizmo definitely will not want them rushing up onto that position. Hoorah, indeed. Yeah, Gizmo, last player up. Unfortunately, if they would have just kept all three in this position, they would have been so set up. But, you know, sometimes you got to take that bet. You know, you really want first place. You want your whole team. Um, but that 2-2 two -two split was going to be tough. And hopefully that's a lesson that you learn. You know, it's just unfortunate that it has to be learned here at the highest stage. And right now, Faction Brazil looking really good. Lots of angles. Three players still alive. Looking to make things happen here. So, hoorah. They do have the most players up. The only team with four... And they're going to start pushing here in a couple seconds on to Gizmo. Last player up is Hugo. If they're able to secure this church, they're going to be in a great position for the rest of this match. 100% mm -hmm. agree with you on that. But, uh, yeah, the pressure is now on for Hugo. Play's coming through. Hurrah. Starting to do their due diligence. One nade could end it here for Gizmo. You can see Hugo about to get pushed. Up comes Sky. Oh, quick step. DBS Dom. in hand. This could be it. <laughs> oh, wait, he got a double? Wow. No way. This is crazy. We're seeing this happen time and time again, where it's just one player up against a full team, and they're putting in work. That just goes to show you the level that we're playing at, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, you, just because it's just one player up, you cannot slip. You know, because they any team could just think, oh yeah, it's one player, go in two v one. We'll cover the backside. You know, Ooh. no, send the whole squad just in case. Because if they send just those two, both yeah. of them are gone, thirsted yeah. instantly. Yeah, no, that would have been the end right then and there. But speed about the end though, that zone shift, pulling in favor of Zebra Master. I think Falcons, they are also going to be smiling from ear to ear because now they know that Hurrah and the team surrounding them will have to just creep their way even closer up in towards the zone. So I think Faction Brazil, Hurrah, they're going to be in for a very tough ride. Yeah, you know, Team Falcons always so dangerous. You can see Top up on top of the roofs. So he's in a really good position here. The only problem is that with Hurrah's spot right now, you know, if they got knocked, they're able to get the res. The problem is, is though, they can't get knocked right now because the zone is starting to creep up on them. They have to leave, and it's going to be tough. Yeah, they're going to have to do it with some vehicles. That is going to be the way because they got to push down very rapidly, and they're most likely going to break into one of those buildings where the Falcons are. But if the Falcons are smart, they'll be ready to gatekeep little by little, and that's what they do. They apply that pressure. They don't let them push onto them, but to that little blue building right in front of them. Yep, and I mean, they can just have their way with him all the way from here. As you can see oh, a beautiful what a nade. nade here from Nerze just peeking in. Next one going up top, not quite finding anything at this point. But this is a great opener now coming through for the Falcons. Oh, yeah, they're going to stick this out. They're going to gatekeep this team until they're all done for. They realize they're the greatest threat. There's Top getting a huge nade elimination. And that's just picking off the squad with the most players up. And just like that, it's now even with Team Falcons. Man, these, this squad is so good. 
at just having one player go up against an entire team and just just disrupt, disrupting them entirely. Uh, we're not even surprised to see that happening at this point, but let's see just how far the Falcons are going to look to push this one. As you can see, already coming into this match, they sat on 24 points. Only two eliminations for now, but we've hit stage nine, right? No more zone, Oof. no more closures other than the blue. That is it. This is the final push for everybody left in this lobby. That is right. This zone is going to dwindle down into nothing, and you can see it starting to close. Here they go. It is Zebra Master. They do have the most central spot, so they're able to gatekeep a little bit, but one wrong step, and you're getting knocked. This nade could be huge. Lay down nades are so deadly. He goes, and he does hop up a little bit, misses the nade, panicked at the last second, and now he's going to have to do it with his gun skill. I mean, talk about a, a oops, right? That was a oopsie right there. Not quite sure if Zebra Master is going to be able to recover from that now. It is going to be up to Smoke. Also still trying to pick up a bit of ground as they push up on that southern side. Up comes the blade or oh. Zebra looking to glitch and they do find one. Top is down. Now the rest of the Falcons have to clear this compound. Here they go. We're seeing players go down like flies. Eliminated. Back to back. Hoorah, still on the other side there, being a thorn in everyone's side. Meanwhile, Zebra Master gonna go ahead and just start popping down, taking out players with that DBS. Team Falcon still alive. He's trying to get those reses off, but it's not gonna be able to happen as they come on down. He goes for the knocked player, gets knocked in return as the Team Falcon still survive for now. It's now to Hoorah's time to push, and they do only to get knocked by Faction Brazil. <laughs> Falcons not out of it just yet, right? Still stepping up to the plate, but now it is down to a 1v1v1. How? Hoorah! How? Getting ended, Icy <gasps> moving up. Oh, cool, oh, calm, and oh, down oh, they go! What a finish! I thought Icy oh. got to that car. I really thought he got there safely, but just gets shot at the last second, and a huge chicken dinner. You can see the relief on Faction Brazil's faces. These guys are pumped, and this was a must-need win for them. You can see that, a little fist pump right there, and that exhale, that just lets you know what these guys are feeling. I mean, what a bounce back though, coming in through Faction here, right? They got a one Elam in game number one, now they end themselves in the spot number one. What a bounce back, but what an insane play. I mean, down to a 3v3 to have the chicken decide a 1v1v1, one v, one v, one v, one. insane. Oh my gosh, you saw him just go. <sighs> that's just so like, yes. And then, oh my gosh, that was tough. You know, <laughs> and that's what these players are feeling. But it's still so crazy to consider that, you know, we saw Team Falcons in that top two once again. It's just absolutely ridiculous as we go ahead and take a look at the highlights from this first Aaron Gale match. Match number two. And there's only four more left to go. Oh, there was actually a knife finish? Wow! <laughs> that was in the beginning, yeah. Yeah, right at the get-go. I mean, you got no weapons, right? You got to make a plan. But uh, yeah, I think this was a very, very exciting play that we had right here up in towards the edge of Razok. I mean, upset upon upset upon upset coming through here. Absolutely. You know, we saw i fives do a great job of just making things happen. Beautifully played here. Perfect timing, right? To get that knock from the side and instantly run out. Monkey with that 1v pretty much 3 in that scenario. It was a double, but then Vitali cleaning him up with that DB right at the end. It's beautifully done. That DP so powerful. Meanwhile, <laughs> Team Falcons, we saw them just pushing forward. It's so hard to take this team out completely. Yep. Yep. I mean, it requires uh, a lot of blue zone damage near the end. Uh, gotta say, though, Smoke Gaming also really stepping it up this match, right? We did see that super aggressive play that they made over on towards uh, <laughs> Money Makers. A little bit of run me over action also then coming through here as we did see the Whales of War having their hand in a little bit of an upset. Yeah, I did think Rose War played that pretty well as, uh, in, their, in that position. You know, they were pushing it out, getting into some fights, getting some nice eliminations. This was an interesting one for me. You know, Gizmo, they decide to go for this 3-1 split. And uh, I think sometimes that can be a tough position because it's so difficult for one player to hold that spot. Especially when you have vehicles you know that are going to push 
in that direction. They go for that res, lose a player, and then just got taken out bit by bit here. And then here's that final, that end gameplay where it was just absolute madness. Oof, and the madness didn't stop there. This was that play, right? I see coming so, <laughs> so close. Quick pick up over on towards Malik. There we have it. And I mean, if it wasn't for that extra bit of blue, da blue zone damage, I mean, things could maybe have come out slightly different. But, I mean, looking at the damage graphs, right? This was a super active match. Oh, 100%. Look at that. Faction Brazil ending up with 1,500 damage. Uh, hoorah! Ending up with 1,700. <laughs> Eight eliminations between three different teams. Very, very good division, I think, amongst eliminations when it comes to you just looking at this graph and that last game in general. Yeah. I mean, a few teams also uh, chomping on some bubbles, as we saw there. Invictus still managing to find a little bit of damage along the way. But high fives again, it's backing in some decent elims, right? Picking up the six there and also amounting all the way up to 1136 damage. 100%. I can't wait to look uh, coming up here at the standings because I want to see where everyone is. I mean, high fives doing a great job at trying to solidify themselves in that top eight. Uh, as you look here at that match ranking, um, they get some good points. I mean, it just goes to show you, right? Those early eliminations, even though they went out so, so early, they still ended up in that top seven. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, eliminations definitely is going to reward the teams quite a bit. Speaking about rewards, though, right? You got you to gotta commend Faction Brazil. Phenomenal, phenomenal play here. Absolutely. Eight eliminations, 18 points in total. And that's going to add on to, you know, the points they got back in match one, but one, which was one. So 19 points going their way in total. Yeah, very, very well done. They put themselves in a great position. The zone just started going towards their way, and they were able to finish it out. I was a little scared for them towards the end. I think if Icy did make it to that uh to that car they could have gotten really interesting so really heads up play for faction brazil to finish it out before it even got to that yeah and of course as we look a little bit further down the board here as well uh invictus unfortunately gonna go back with a bag full of donuts not finding anything this match but we still have two more um uh, you know two more matches to go for them to try and potentially maybe make up a bit of ground here that's right. That's right. Two more Aaron Gales, two more Miramars coming up. So that's only four more matches. And uh, we're going to see where everybody lines up here at the end of this. It's going to be huge. And, and, you know, we do see some good points there uh, early on. But I'll tell you what, Zebra Master actually ends up with the MVP spot. All right. Domino are beautifully executed there. He had three eliminations. Just overall, just great stats across the board. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to say, though, I think what helped quite a bit here for Zebra Master was that position that they were holding right just here. I mean, such an angle to work off of. Yeah, as you can see, so his, some of his clips here, his highlights, using those nades to his advantage. He was playing that outer edge of that circle, just disrupting that fight. Oh, that nice little jumping 180. Yeah, I remember this. We saw the edge of that during the game. He just did a great job of just soaking up all of those points. And you can see here again, you know, the last matches of the day and of this qualifier finals coming up. It's always tough when it's only one day, right? Because, yeah. you know, if you're just having a little bit of an off game, you're done. You go home and you yeah. got to wait for the next event, you know. So hopefully uh, we see some teams able to rally their squads. You know, that's what the leader is being all about is when you have a first couple of rough games, how do you bounce back? And honestly, now's the time or never. Yeah, because I think especially once we hit match number four, uh, whatever they haven't been able to achieve at that point is just going to become even more difficult to do, you know, leading into the final bit of the day. Mm, as we take a look at the overall standings, and you can see right there, right? High Five is able to get into second place with 23 points. Team Falcons with 36 is huge, considering that's only been two matches they're now in that position to where all they got to do is play consistent for the rest of the day and they're walking away with first place so um if you're any of these teams literally any of these squads you have to shut them down this next game i think yeah because if they have another good game here they're gonna run away with this thing 100 yeah. percent 
Yeah, I mean, one of the teams that I think uh, has uh, great potential could maybe even be Faction Brazil, right? We just saw them jump 10 slots all the way up in towards that fourth place. So there's a lot of potential cooking on the horizon here. And I'm curious to see exactly how the teams are going to be approaching these final two uh, Erangales. Yeah, it's going to be really huge here. You know, you cannot afford any slip ups, any mistakes, because any little thing and it's all over. So again, for anybody that's just tuning in for the first time, it's first place. First place gets an automatic ticket to the finals here of the PUBG Mobile Global Open. So if you just look and you see how well Team Falcons are doing, they are already looking like a lock for that ticket. And uh, I think if you're being realistic, knowing how well they're playing, you got to shut them down here now. So I want to see something different from these squads coming up. Yeah, there's going to be a lot to look forward to. But of course, uh, we are going to be hopping into a very quick break as well. So be sure to stay tuned. And we'll see you back in a short few moments.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Punchy Mobile Globe in Brazil. We're at match number three, and we're headed into Erangel. And uh, I mentioned it a little bit earlier. Team Falcons are on top, looking to go ahead and head into the finals. And I will not lie, that is where they belong, okay? This is the team yeah. that definitely <laughs> I want to see in the finals. You know, one thing else that I really love seeing is I like to see teams that have the ability to adapt mid-tournament, you know? Um, mm. I think that's something that we've been lacking in PUBG Mobile Esports. We haven't seen it in a long time, right? We see teams just like no matter what happens, they just continue to do the same. And um, mm. it frustrates me because I want to see a team that's like, let's say that you're a team in the last game of the day, right? Last game of the tournament, you need 20 eliminations and you need a team to go out first, okay? If I'm them, I'm like, hey, we got to we gotta either hot drop the squad or find them early and take them out. And then we need to just push everybody, right? Because that's the only chance you have. You can't just sit mm. back and do the same thing, you know? Um, so I want to see teams start making those adjustments. And honestly, if you're being real and you want that main event ticket, you're going to have to look at the Falcons and be like, hey, you guys, we, have to, we have to slow them down eventually. Yeah, I, I think... Getting getting that uh, direct ticket. Ooh, nice zone. Beautiful oh, melee base. Wow. Love it. Love it. But uh, what what I'm saying is, getting that that direct invite into the main event itself, right? It's gonna be earned. It's not something that's just gonna happen all by itself, right? You really gotta, gotta get down to it if you want to be the team to be awarded that position. Hundred percent, dude. And honestly, a, a big opportunity right now is going to be on the side of Death Wolves, right? They're going to be down in that military island, all by themselves. So they're going to be looted up to the teeth, to their fangs, and going to be waiting for teams to creep on up towards them. So calm before the storm. Nothing really too crazy. We do see Team Falcons, right, due to the plane path, dropping in a different location. So um, I do like this from them, right, because. If they realize what's at stake here, which they do, they're so smart the way they play, you know, they're going to mix things up on these teams. They don't want nobody surprising them, trying to take them out early. So I like the fact that they're mixing up their drop spots. I think it's safe to say that the Falcons are definitely not going to wing it, right? Oh, yeah. They're not leaving anything up to chance. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but, well, in I the mean, that's what it takes, right? Especially yeah, to be yeah. a second place team in the global hmm. championships. I mean, speaking of that, that was that was pretty intense to watch, the, the, right? I mean, sitting there in the audience watching these teams just go at it, it's insane. So I can just I can just imagine, you know, <laughs> all that expertise now coming onto the battlefield here yet again. Speaking of expertise, uh, we've got a lot of exploration also now happening. A lot of teams already starting with a, a rather early rotation down to that far southern side of the map. Oh, yeah, that's what you got to do, especially when you see a good old Sosnovka circle. You got to get looted up very quickly, and you want to get to that island as fast as humanly possible. And you're going to see Rook uh, start heading in that position, but I believe that is going to be Zebra Masters already going to hold down that bridge. So instead, they looks like they're going to try to take this edge of Milta, creep up a little. Oh, actually, they're not looted at all. So they didn't loot up. They just said straight up, we're gonna head towards we're gonna head towards Milta, loot up there, and then try to head to Saznaka right after. I mean, that's a that's a brave decision to make, especially looking at what we can see from the map. Right, there's three teams now looking to converge down onto that Milta position, so it is gonna be pretty hot and sweaty. Uh, it's not gonna be whatsoever hot and sweaty over in towards Millie base, at least not for the time being, as we did see the players there. Uh, from the Death Wolves, right? Having the full base to themselves, they can go about, get themselves looted up. It's over on this bridge where the heat is going to get dialed up. Yeah, you know what? Speaking of heat, look at that. Be bold, being very bold on the early rotation. These guys are also completely naked. They don't have any, you know, no loot at all, no vest, no helmet. They headed straight towards Novo, and they're going to be the first ones here. So, I mean, heck. Fortune does favor the bolt, so they're gonna be there nice and early, gonna get nice and looted up and ready for the rest of the match. Yeah, yeah. I see. I think like uh, like the, the whole saying of uh, you know fortune favors the bolt. I think I took that one a little bit too literally. Mm. Um, 
But, you know, looking at Beevold out on the battlefield, they looking pretty good. I mean, this is a good startup, especially with the zone being so far towards the southern side. But I'm curious as to whether or not they're going to have some company maybe coming in in a little while. Totally possible. So they got to get looted up pretty quickly here. They're staying early on, maybe to try and catch somebody on that rotation just in case. They didn't go, like, all the way to the outer edge of Novo and start lo lo looting backwards. They stayed right up towards the front, maybe to try to prepare for that situation because they know teams are going to try to get there as early as possible. So really interesting to see. We are starting to see, I think that's hoorah on the move. You know, Rook just trying to get a couple headshots. Oh, gets a nice little, little hit marker there. He said, I'll take that one to the bank. <laughs> but they are going to be holding the edge of this bridge. And honestly, the longer they do, the more dire and more desperate it's going to get. I gotta say though, the best sound in this game is that ding that you get. Ding. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's almost as good as the Falcon sound, but uh, That's I would true. say, you know, the headshot is just like, mm, it's mm. magic. Oh, especially <laughs> if it comes from a suppressed M24. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Music to my ears. Music to my yeah. ears. Maybe I, got, I have a, a, a, a bolt action sniper headshot on my bingo card for today, so hopefully we'll see it. Botate mm. though! That's one of them. Yeah. We'll take that. Here we go. Bo Tate is done and dusted from Gizmo Esports. Heading on over. I believe this is from Primorsk, right? Yeah. So they're going to be, they, they busted down one of them boats from there. And they're going to head down over to the island. Ooh, but uh, looking at the trajectory, they, they're potentially going to be aiming for a southern positioning over on that island. So that could be quite interesting because uh, we don't really have anybody there. We might potentially have a little bit of hoorah if they decide to rotate that far down towards the southern side. And speaking of rotations though, Falcons, they still have a lot of work to do trying to get themselves close in towards the southern side. Yeah, it's going to be a hard game for them, for sure. Um, they're going to have to fight their way in, but honestly, this is what they do best, right? They really do a great job of these outer rotations, pushing on these teams that are going to be late, because usually the teams that are late on rotations are, could be some of the most like nervous squads, the most hesitant ones. And it, if you're looking to soak up points, if you're Team Falcons, that's going to be your main target right there. I mean, it's almost like they've engaged the janitor duty, right? They've unlocked yep. the janitor skill, right? Clean up aisle four, aisle five. They're on it. They're right there picking up all the pieces they can find. And speaking about pieces, though, it's going to be a little bit of pressure now coming onto the players here from Insanity. But we've seen a few attempts in the first two matches on their end. But now they're going to have to contest against, well... The big wingers here, the Falcons knocking on their door. I mean, these are some of the best teams. That, these are the best teams, right, in the region. And, you know, Insanity, they are such a great squad. They've obviously earned their position to be here. The problem is, is that they just went out so early in the first two matches. So I'm talking about hesitant squads. I mean, they have every right to have that, right? Because they're just so down on the leaderboards. They know they need a monster game. Uh, so they are in a position to gatekeep. I like the fact that they're playing it a little bit more passive. Actually, a lot more, right, than their past couple of games. They realize that, hey, we got to put points on the board here. So let's go for a bridge gatekeep and try to soak up these eliminations. Unfortunately, it's most likely going to be against Team Falcons and Royals of War. So uh, good luck to them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm also looking over on towards that eastern side. That is looking pretty interesting now. But we do also then see the Moneymakers making their push through up towards Pachinki. There's going to be a little bit, a bit of action there between the players coming through from Intense Gaming as well as Invictus. Ooh, Invictus just trying to find the sprays wherever they can. Very damaged side though on the Invictus players. Oh, oh Intense Game just looking to get those points because they know they're going to need it. Yeah, they need to get these knocks because... And you can see him trying to take them out if he can because they know that, oh, it's going to be so difficult to get into this island. If you can just get some points on the board just in case, that is going to be your best case scenario. But they were able to steal three, so that's pretty good. Let's see how they opt to play this, though, because they are very, very late to the party. Mm. I mean, already we do see a lot of those prime positions being occupied, and even just looking at the coastline, it is going to pose quite a threat, especially for Intense now to get themselves situated but to see how they look to play this one out. Meanwhile, we are going to be jumping down to the western edge of zone. Well, quickly. A <laughs> quick taste of what's happening towards the Ooh. side there of the millibase. Ooh, nice air, though. 
Yeah, they got a little bit of airtime there. Meanwhile, Rook's looking to get some airtime on that roof. Looking right towards the direction of Hi-Fi. Meanwhile, here we go. Team Falcons looking to secure this bridge. Where did Insanity go? Where'd you go? They said, see ya. We are out of here. We're going to cross this bridge. The gatekeeping idea was fun, but we smelt some uh, Falcons in the air, and we're out of here. <laughs> Smart play. Yeah. Yeah, but I think it's also a good spot to, uh, looking at where they got themselves situated over on towards that island, right? So whoever makes it off this bridge is going to be running into Insane. So there is a great opportunity for Insanity now to pick it up. Speak it up, pick ups. Um, yeah, the Death Isn't Wolves it? now losing even more players. Oof, tough. Yeah, anytime you have, of course, a, a milli zone, it's going to make things interesting. Falcons are going to be... They know they're going to be going this pretty late, but it's still early in the game today. They can't afford to eat a little bit of blue zone here. Now, they are going up against Faction Brazil. This was the team that won that last match. So, they're in a tough spot, too, because Insanity, after that rotation, they are in a great position to gatekeep both of these teams now. Hmm. Yeah, we did see them backtrack ever so slightly back onto the bridge. Speaking about crossing, so it's all the way down on that southern side. Here's more. Now, having to share the position here with Hurrah and Money Makers also holding all the way down to that far southern side. But then, of course, the rest of the Death Wolves also moving into the territory. So it's going to be heavily contested down on the southern side, but nothing changing though up towards those bridges. Let's see. The next zone does go on up and it goes south here. So, oh my goodness. the Let's see what the play is going to be as team falcons eating a a good chunk of blue zone every single time the zone closes it hurts i think faction brazil are gonna go in the other direction they're gonna give up the bridge entirely and try to maybe circumvent but oh my gosh team falcons are gonna punish them <laughs> for giving up like that yeah and i think also the blue is gonna cause quite a bit of damage to them so i'm not quite sure how to feel about that rotation i mean not the entire it's not the entire team that has moved out we still see uh, a few morsels of them just hanging around on the edge meanwhile it's gonna be the money makers now having a bit of a splash trying to cool down relax splash. enjoy the drink out in the open but gizmo i love that setup for gizmo though i do as well and look at this i mean the the timing from Team Falcons, just beautifully done because Insanity has given up on that gatekeep. They knew that the that it's just better to take that position in circle. I do like their rotation, but it works out for the Falcons as they're going to have a free reign on in. Meanwhile, intense game, putting in some work in the blue zone. That's four eliminations for them. Going to have to start boosting quickly because this zone's going to start hurting once it closes. Yeah, and still Faction Brazil. Trying to alleviate a little bit of that pressure over on the bridge. But it's the top getting stopped in their tracks. But is this now the opportunity? Or mm. at least, well, what's left of Faction Brazil to get themselves back into Zoro. And Moneymaker's now going to be feeling a lot of that heat as Icy what gets hit. Shot! But Bravo, down they go. Old boy, M24. Bingo card, baby. Check it off the list. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see it from the sniper's perspective, but I don't mind viewing it from the other end. Beautifully done there. As Gizmo are, I mean, so many of these teams are still in the blue zone here, trying to make the best decision. Oh boy, come on, give it to me one more time. Bro, don't you dare. Don't you, yeah, he knows better. He said, I'm not looking in that direction. Old boy is not messing around. And if I even peek my head out in the slightest, I'm about to get punished. Uh oh. Old boy just waiting for it. Come on. Nope. They're not. Gizmo not trying to risk it. Don't blame him. Yeah, but I mean, this is a good play coming through from Adamson, right? Just capitalizing on a little bit of a sneaky play here. But still got to watch out. I mean, old boy is there, is looking, is prepping, waiting for the opportunity to get that tink to go. And then that could be the opening for the rest of the money makers. Oh, it'd be huge. It'd be huge. You can see Alan Zan trying to be able to get him maybe with a nade. Icy's looking at Insanity being, oh, just so silent. Look at that discipline. Trigger discipline big time. He realizes, I don't want to give up my position. I only have two players. I'd rather just stay, get that intel, and move later on. Very smart. 1v1, though. DBS is out. Gonna get it Ooh. done there. Yep. That's it, Alan, for the finish. We do also say goodbye to Faction as they get sent away. Row 
going to be following hard on their heels. But let's see whether or not Koa can relay enough information back to the rest of the crew. I see though now not going to be laying all that trigger discipline. Instead, going to be digging into the side of Nene Bete. Beautifully done. Hey, you know what? Soak up those points if you can. And guess what? It got stolen. Insanity going to go ahead and take it just <laughs> like that. So, yeah, you try to get that secure. You get the knock, but you got to get that finish. Otherwise, that you know, all these other players and teams are going to soak up those points big time. So now that their position's gone, they're going to go for the wide, wide wrap. Probably going to head towards that as, as south as they can. And uh, they're actually just going to probably just creep up right here, right towards the edge and stay. I wouldn't doubt it. Never mind. They're, they're going to set it a little bit further. Pretty risky. <laughs> Yeah, it is going to be a little bit risky. Good play, though, coming in through here from Sky. Ooh, all right. Does get the one con the confirmation right there. The rest of Smoke now going to be trying to lock it down. Meanwhile, Insanity also trying to find a bit of a foothold. Inko feeling so, so much hit. I mean, Gizmo, right? They're not even in zone, but they definitely trying to blaze their way forward, right? Trying to create any vulnerabilities or potential angles to push in. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they're looking to do in Saturday. Just playing it very concise here. They want to get to an end game, and they're already in it. So trying to make some plays. Especially, they got to get those fingers warm after going out early twice. Meanwhile, Smoke Gaming, they had a very interesting rotation. They just went straight down from the north side and just swam right across and were able to make it into this island nice and early. So sometimes that swim strategy does work. They did lose one in the process, but with three up, pretty good central and military, you can't blame them one bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just got to pay the toll, right? It's, uh, That's it's right. part of the, the the cost of living. But in the meanwhile, hi is going to be looking to just connect on through here with smoke. So you can see Myth moving up. Quick response. Ooh. Oh, even with the suppressor, they get found out and picked off. Instantly, instantly. You... I mean, at this level, it's like you can only take a couple shots from the same position and you got to move. Otherwise, you're just going to get absolutely beamed from another spot. And look at that trigger discipline, right? Bro, just chilling, waiting. Say, nope, I want this confirmed. He's going to go for the reload here. Is he going to get the finish? Blue zone's coming. He's going to run. Oh, Ooh. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Shit, I'll, take that. I'll take that one. But that's the second time we see Vitali doing that, right? Previous match, exactly the same thing happened up in Raza. Beautiful cleanup going through here from Got as they do capitalize on even more of the upsets. But now it is up to Hura, right? As you can see, slowly trying to get themselves in, but even Gizmo applying pressure from the backside. Vitali, so smart, just soaking up those steals. I mean, those are crucial points right there. He realizes it, especially with having only two players up. Stealing all those points are going to be huge. Next zone does go on over towards insanity so they are this is their this is their chance right they're in that that playing graveyard right there very central centered up they just got to be able to get that gun skill and keep teams away from them meanwhile bro trying to make it happen uh oh doing a little peekaboo game here gets the shots <laughs> actually yeah no that was bro gets the knock on vitaly that's it that's what you get for stealing my eliminations buddy can he take out seven though that's gonna be the question Ooh, you gotta watch out for Higgard as well, just chilling on the edge. I mean, at least for Bro, it's not last hurrah. They were able to send them backing, but the Inko, they have a little bit of backup. So let's see, can Bro find the play? Just He's looking, looking for the toes. Come on, get it. No, gets Bark instead. <laughs> mm -mm, yeah, maybe he's trying to go for some tires, maybe trying to take out that vehicle. I don't think it's blown up just yet. Oh, I think it's on fire. He's going to have to run on the open and make a play here. He's going for it. Oh, he lost his perspective. We're going to watch Rook heal up for a second. But here we go. Now we're going to see Bro pushing on up. Oh, oh. it's seven, said. <laughs> nah, let me just shut that down real quick. Uh, easy claps, right? Easy claps. But now, Inko, right? This is where the hard work comes. Because now they got to get their butts back into that zone. Yes, there is a big gaping hole onto that southeastern side of the zone. But we've got so many teams held up in the vicinity that I don't think it's going to be a very easy point to enter on. Oh, not easy at all. You know, I mean, you know what? Insanity does have it easy. They have so much real estate here, so much vision. All they got to do is really just play it correctly, hit their shots. 
But they do have to worry about that backside. Intense game could definitely disrupt them. And that's why you can see them kind of splitting their resources a little bit. But they can't split themselves too far. They got to be prepared for a push because they know it is coming. And you can see Death Wolves and the rest of these squads are just looking for that little bit of an opening to take it away from them. Vitaly running out in the open. Uh oh, he's putting on his dancing shoes. Nice return shots. That forces Rado to go down. But you know what? Oh, the Death Wolves saw him as soon as he gave up his position and said, give me that point. I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah, gonna end it right then and there. Now, Zebra Master also gonna come knocking on the door. It's gonna be CeeLo about to feel the heat, the spray, and down it is. Quick reactions, though. Love that spray. Smoke, though, also getting sent away. Rook, gonna see if they can maybe get into a little bit of the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, Rook. Rook. Um, I mean, that's the sound yeah. I make after I miss a shot, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I think that's the sound they're making in the position that they're in right now because it's not too too solid. Yeah, they're holding it down. They're just hoping that zone stays where they're at because it's nothing but open field surrounding them. Meanwhile, you can see Hi-Fi just trying to get those single taps. Insanity doing a great job. This is what they need to be doing, right? It's just applying that pressure because it's really only just him looking at the south side. So Silence has a very big job on his shoulders. Yeah, it could be golden for Silence at this point, so we got to see mm. whether or not they can line that one up. Meanwhile, Rook still now having to do quite a bit of work. I like the fact that we've got those Death Wolves also starting to make a bit of a play as they take a run for the southern side of zone. But now, intense, uh, Insanity rather, could be looking to make it quite challenging for the remainder of Rook now to get themselves in zone. Oh, let's see what happens here, because right now this zone does favor Be Bold. Be Bold, very, very fortunate to be in the position that they're in now. And yeah, you can just see them turtling it up, ready to take some shots downfield as the rest of these teams are starting to make that push. This is zone number six. You don't want to get caught in this blue zone at all. And Death Wolves, oh, going to make a very bold rotation. Possibly even going for that res, very risky. Well, I mean, moving into these next few phases, you definitely could benefit from having more numbers, right? Uh, you could go forward a, a duo play, but it is going to be ever so much more challenging. Meanwhile, V-Bold trying to see if they can reach in and get that pick up, but Hi-Fi is also now going to try to assert their position up towards the north as the Zebra team makes the play. Up they come. Let's see whether or not the Zebra Masters can find that play to f swoop the Hi-Fi is under the rug. Oh, under the rug, under the wing, and you can see them try their best effort, but it's not going to end up where... Actually, no, this is a different team. So this is Zebra Master there in that position. Hi-Fi's holding it down at that edge, looking to press on two Zebra Masters as Monkey. They're barely in this circle right now, so they're trying to get as much information as they can to try to get some of these knocks. It's all about timing. If they can catch a very good, fortunate third party, they're still in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they definitely would still be in this. And I think this also, this is a really good play coming through here from Be Bold, right? So far, this is the best uh, positional play, right? Um, that we've actually seen in just these past two matches. So things looking pretty positive here. Let's see whether or not Be Bold can be bold mm. enough to claim mm -hmm. this territory. Yeah, you know what, DK, though? You know who it's really fortunate for? Mm. High fives. The reason why Ooh. is because they're so high on the leaderboards. Team Falcons went out with only one elimination. So this is their chance. They realize mm. it. They, they only have two players up, but the pressure's on. They can't afford to go out. They need to close that gap if they want that first place finish and even be in the running against this monster squad that is Team Falcons. They open the door. It's up to them to walk through it. It's going to be hard, though. They're not in the best position, and they are being gatekeep by Zebra Masters. You can see them in that buggy trying to figure out what to do in this position. they got to play it very carefully. Mm. But, I mean, even for Zebra Masters, this is a good play, right? they they just trailing by two points behind the high five. So this is essentially the fight to see who will be allowed to try and chase the Falcons. So there is so much riding on that play. But again, we are prepping for that zone to shift. Is it going to favor any one team in particular? If it goes south, ooh, it doesn't. But this mm -hmm. is now the play, right? Insane, they need to move up here. 
Ugh. This next zone's gonna be brutal. If it goes even just a, a, a smidge more south, it's gonna be literally white out in the open. So I think a lot of these teams realize that. You can see B-Bold running out in the open. He decides to take those shots, trying to steal some eliminations. Oh. Runs out of bullets out of that DP, switches guns. And we can just see him trying to put in some work here as B-Bold are applying that pressure to the Death Wolves. One more shot and gets him. And that's Death Wolves <laughs> gone. Top four remaining. Pretty dang crazy, but now... Right, if you thought it was crazy, it is going to get even more insane moving forward. Uh -huh. We've got uh, four squads, only one of them still has everyone in play, right? That is going to be Insanity holding up on towards that northwestern side, but they're still going to kind of rub their shoulders up against Zebra Master, high fives, and then of course, Be Bold holding steady on that southern edge. Yeah, it essentially is, it was still anyone's game, right, to get that first place. Uh, but they needed to have a good game here and now. And those teams in that bottom score need to have a monster game. And Insanity is that team. They only have four eliminations. They need to win this game and eliminate everybody if they want to stay in the game here. But, you know, you got teams like Zebra Master and Hi-Fi so up high on the leaderboard. They want to get that first place position here and now. And let's see what happens as Insanity are playing this very, very carefully. Uh-oh, maybe a little bit too careful. It's going to be hard, though. Silence throwing that nade through the... Oh, my <laughs> gosh! He threaded that needle through the gate. And that worked out perfectly. Beautifully done there from Silence. That was beautiful play. But now, I mean, we're down to three teams, right? Three players on average on either end. So let's see. Ooh, that nade's getting close. Oh, finds oh. a little bit Ow. of damage. A little bit, but not enough. Let's see what happens. Uh oh. Oh no! Monkey going down to blue zone. I think they realize it. Yeah. They nothing mm. they can do. Pop a blue coming in the works. Take it down, high five. So now here we go. It's B Bold versus Insanity. Insanity going out so early in their first two matches. I was telling you how they need to play it slower, right? They need to put some mm. points on the board, and this is how you do it right here. And uh, especially to get that rotation nice and early, secure this position onto military base. Very, very good game for them. They don't have the circle, though, so it's not over yet. B-Bulls yep. have three players. Might as well call it four because Papa Blue's on their side. <laughs> I mean, what a step up, though, for both these teams, right? As you said, uh, Insanity not having the best run in the first two. Be bold. I mean, they made it up into top 10 for both of the previous matches, but this time they've made it all the way up into the top two. So let's see. Can they be bold enough to claim that winner when a chicken dinner? The position looking super favorable, but now it's going to be go time as Insanity starts to roll on up. Oh, what a knock there from Silence! That was so huge! Now they have a 2v1, but they lose it! Be bold! Oh, what a play right there! Lauren's in, clutching it up. Gonna get another knock right here, most likely. Yes, sir, he does! He said, you know what? Don't even worry, man. You guys are insane. I'm insane myself. I'll take down this whole squad. Oh. The, the confidence just looking so, so good. Let's see whether or not Insanity can pack the talent they need to try and clutch this winner winner chicken dinner. But I'm, if I'm being honest, right, it looks like Be Bold has got this one in the bag. So much so that they are down to one opponent left and standing between them and that chicken dinner. Let's put it this way. They have it so well in the bag. I put my whole house on it. Here comes an absolute <laughs> red zone. And he said, you know what? I'm not going towards that red zone. I'm going to stay in the blue zone here. Take the chicken dinner. We'll take that second place. But man, be bold. Clutching it up right there at the end. You can see him put his head on his arms. Because that was a stressful one. Oh. I mean, that was intense. Yep, you got to get it done. You got to get it done. But what a performance. Seven Elims and 1,817 damage being packed in here. Absolutely phenomenal comeback here from the V-Bolt squad. And I mean, well, game number three, what a way to wrap it up. It was huge. It was a huge one, right? We saw Team Falcons go out early. Uh, they tried that really, really late rotation into the into the island and it didn't work out there. So let's take a look here. 
Uh, man, it's such, it's so crazy. It's so crazy to see how these leaderboards are going to shake up at the end of the day because it was a perfect case scenario, right? You have Team Falcons dominate the first two. They go out early here. The second and third place teams put up some good points and teams at the bottom, right? Clutched it up right there at the end. I mean, it's going to be a pretty tight competition all the way through. And I mean, I think it's the beauty of these Battle Royals, right? You never know who's going to be the next team to step up. I mean, we spoke about this off camera, right? You might be the best team in the world, but if you don't have that zonal positioning, there's not much you can do about it. Yeah. And that just happens, right? Uh, it, it, the way that I say that in order to make a championship game is when you don't get that zone, you got to put up some points, right? You got to have some mm. consistent ones. But when you do get that favorable position, you not just have to win the game, right? You have to win the game and get a ton of eliminations in the process. As we take a look here at the highlights from that last one. And, and the thing is, is that we saw the Falcons. Every time they got a good position, they won with double digit eliminations, right? Now, we didn't really see that here in this next one, right? We saw the teams that ended up getting those top placements, not getting those double digits, but they put some big points on the board that they desperately needed. So you can't take that away from them. Yeah, I mean, 100% agree with you. It, it was about time that we see a little bit of a shift in that dynamic come through. But I think a lot of the pressure for this phase and for this map in particular was all the all the, the, the challenges that we saw erupting over on those bridges, right? Both the East and the Western bridges. 100 percent so uh you know we'll see that one play in particular was that one we just saw a little bit earlier right what did you think about that rotation for faction brazil i mean talk about an upset right definitely trying to sneak their way on through it was quite aggressive over on towards intense but you know intense they were they ready to just lock it down and keep anybody from gaining ground on them yeah, I think that they realized that it was Team Falcons on the other side of that bridge. And they say, you know what? Uh, we don't even want to take this fight. Let's see if we can sneak away. And they got punished for it. I think sometimes you just have to commit to that fight, especially after having such a solid game that they did in that last one. But you know what? Things do happen. And uh, we talked about it earlier, right? Fortune favors the bold as they end up winning match number three here. Be bold, getting that very favorable position, and they executed on it well. Yeah, I mean, you can't fault them for that. It was a phenomenal play, but also you got to give credit up to uh, Insanity, right? Just holding so much ground here, moving into the end, but as we saw, Lorenzen, you know, it was just a quick, swift move, stepping up, picking up three of the players here from Insanity. Okay, you know what I say? Uh, DBS OP. You know what I'm saying? DBS, <laughs> so strong. You know, I think I heard that, that that it got nerfed, but I don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? It's still putting in so much work because we look at the top five players. And of course, it's got to be Lorenzen. Look at that there. Four eliminations, three knocks, 800 damage. Two of those in that little 2v1 that we saw earlier. And that was the one to win the game because honestly, if he goes down there, I think we would have seen Insanity take it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's tough to beat a, a nade barrage getting sent in your direction. But, uh, yeah, if they were able to survive it, things maybe could have come changed out, oh, right, moving forward. But also good representation coming through here from the high fives, right? Because Snow X, Monkey both picking up uh, a decent amount of Elam, some decent damage also then to follow suit. 100%. You know, so we saw a good solid amount of points coming from high fives that's going to definitely make the leaderboards probably shake up a little bit i'm interested to see where that ends up hopefully we'll see that here soon but i mean a great performance uh here in match number three uh we only uh, have a few more matches left to go here dk it's one more aaron gale and two more miramar so um i think teams it's crunch time right here right now um if you're in that bottom eight, what do you think they should do on this one, right? You think they should just, oof, oh, should they go in hard here, try to play the same? Because, uh, I mean, players like Lorenzen are making it happen mm -hmm. here in clutch time. I mean, if you're in the bottom eight and, uh, you know, you're going to try and play it the same as you have, obviously it's not been working too favorably. So I definitely would go for a bit of a change up, right? Shift into a different gear, right? Try a stat that you might not have considered in the previous two matches mm -hmm. the hard part is is that this is only one day and not to mention mm. they didn't really have time to adapt to the lobby right because 
You have one. The first Aaron Gale match was a very normal one, but the second one was a wild card, right? You have a you have a military island finish, which really makes things tough. Um, so in match number three, if you're in that bottom side, you, I think you gotta play it so carefully. You gotta put some points on the board here, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, speaking about putting points on the board, no matter what, right? It's no surprise that uh, Lorenzen is going to be our MVP for this game, right? Just for played sure. such a phenomenal position here. And as we saw, just going absolutely ham on the edge. But of course, it's going to be time for the match rankings, right? b securing themselves 17 points Ooh. with such a beautiful chicken. Oh, man, that was massive right there. And one that they desperately, desperately needed. I mean, we saw that player put his hands in his arms and just... <laughs> oh, I mean, that was huge. So beautiful for them. Very big for Insanity, too, especially of how they started those first two matches. So they put themselves in the running, and that's what's so important, yeah. right? It's like the fact that they they got themselves a mathematical chance here. As we take a look, Team Falcons still on top. They were 37 points, but High Fires and Zebra Master are not too far away from them. But look at that jump from B Bold. Mm. Yeah, Eight big, big positions. jump. <laughs> Wow. I mean, it, it's beautiful to see these things happen, right? It just shows you that it, it ain't over until it's over, right? Even Insanity also climbing up five spots all the way up into that ninth position. So I'm expecting still a little bit of a back and forth, a little bit of a shift as we're moving into the latter half of today's matches. Of course, as we know, three down, three more to go. Oh boy, it's going to get intense here as we're going into our final Aaron Gale match. And then two Miramars and it's all over here. So um, obviously there's only two things we care about folks. First place, because they get that ticket to the finals and top eight, that's it. Mm. Everybody else goes home. Second place is the same as eight, right? They're all gonna go to that same uh, prelims, you know, and it's gonna be hard to play there. So I think if you're these teams like, you know, high fives, and you know you really really want to push the envelope and try to get that ticket you want first place no matter what i think this is one of the few instances where finishing in ninth place is still going to be a viable spot to push for right i mean as we know first slot going out the remaining eight spots then still open for the taking so i'm expecting a little bit of friction now to start heading towards that that lower position on the leaderboard but of course as we saw now from be bold right they just play a monster game, and you can still make such a big move on the leaderboard. Uh, absolutely. Speaking of big moves, of course, we got to give a big shout out to the Realme 12 Pro Plus. It elevates your photography experience with 120x super zoom and performance in games. Go check it out today. How to be a portrait master. And we're back here, guys. Of course, we got to give a big shout out to the PUBG Mobile 6th anniversary version. It's available now, guys. Make sure you guys share your memories on social media with the hashtag PUBGM 6th wishing and experience the anniversary now in PUBG Mobile version 3.1.
geceye 3 defa katıldık ve bu sefer Türkiye taraftarının karşısında olduğu için daha inançlıyız. İki kez dünya şampiyon olup yani rekora üçüncülüğe daha yaklaşmak, bir adım atmak istiyoruz. Yani onu düşünüyorum, başka bir şey düşünmüyorum. Gue udah empat kali di PMGC dan baru dua kali di final dan ini uh, tahun apa ya kayak PMGC pertama kali ya setelah dua tahun kemarin gue nggak lolos dan mungkin perasaan gue berada di PMGC lagi di final tentunya itu apa ya semua tim itu udah merata sih dari segi skill dan apapun itu dan gue rasa uh, PMGC ini bakalan PMGC yang seru banget karena semua tim itu Udah jago banget. Mungkin momen yang nggak uh, bisa gue lupain itu waktu uh, jadi World Champ di Malaysia tahun 2019 itu itu salah satu yang apa ya momen yang paling gue inget banget karena semua orang juga tahu kan kalau tim gue dan gue bisa buktiin kalau kita tuh bisa loh juara dunia nggak cuma di region kita doang. Karena juara itulah tidak pernah menyerah. Top has emerged as the MVP of South Asia Championship. Your MVP was Stalwart Esports. Give it up, Jakarta, for Top. The Yamrut Port Kuru, the Pagara, Chivit, Chivit, and just the Tufku at Port. Beast, you're in my subject. That is absolutely insane. They came to the cliffs late, and then at the very last moment. Sekarang gue ngerasa buat tahun ini dan lebih tepatnya buat turnamen ini PMGC final ini gue bawa apa ya udah balik ke prime gue dan ini saatnya gue buktiin kalau gue tuh masih layak di apa ya di tahun ke enam ini Türkiye karşısındaki ilk offline burada bize çok desteklemeler lazım destekleyenlere çok teşekkür ediyorum yani her şey için Konuşalım, tekrar alalım. Her şey için Cem Erkez derim ama. Çünkü şu an sadece daha da çok var. Şu an sadece daha da çok var. Çünkü daha da çok var. Çünkü daha da çok var. Çünkü daha da çok var. Çünkü daha da çok var. Çünkü daha da çok var. Çünkü daha da çok var. Estamos preparados para ganhar, estamos muito felizes. Já chegamos aqui e agora o Michel vai ser campeão. E gol loops. Hai, kami dari Malaysia, kita orang akan buat yang terbaik untuk Malaysia. Malaysia boleh, Lonely Alliance. Ya, galera, a gente está bem tranquilo, bem animado, treinamos muito e vamos ser campeão dessa PMGC. Tamo junto. Lonely Alliance! I can't wait. Hello! I will bring the chicken dinner. Just play the game. It's like uh, if you ask uh, what you are doing to anybody, then they will have all different answers. So maybe people easily think the pro players are playing their best to for money, prize pool. I don't think so. I think prize pool can be one reason, but each player will have uh, another different reason. They may just want to show off themselves to audiences or other people. Somebody wants to take the fame or reputation as a pro player representing their country. So all players will have their different target and goal. But I believe anybody playing here, their first and most important goal will be, you know, in our chicken dinner.
everybody. Here we go to the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil. Of course, done in partnership with Real Me. Guys, this is going to be a big match here because we are now into the second half of this tournament here, right? This is Ooh. the qualifying finals. This is it here for the day. We're going to see quite a few teams go home, eight in total, and they have worked so hard to be here. So it's time to put up or shut up. These are those championship rounds, DK, right? You got to get it mm -hmm. done here now. Yeah, I mean, there's so, so much at stake here. And I'm hopefully, hopefully we're going to be seeing a, a beautiful change up coming through into this latter half here. So the pressure is riding pretty dang high at this point. I mean, you don't want to be one of those teams that get sent home, right? You want to either get the pole position or still make it over in towards the prelim. So let's see what the teams are going to be bringing as we look to take our second breath and get into the final uh, Erangel here for the day. Yeah, we're going to see a nice southern play path. Not so nice for some of these teams, but most of them are going to be able to get into the position that they normally drop. We're going to see Team Falcons go to that Novo area. We saw them do that in match number one, so nothing too surprising for them. We see Death Wolves heading on over to Millie as well. So uh, this zone, very, very familiar here. This is pretty much the same circle we saw in zone number one. So no excuses, no excuses mm. here for these teams. I mean, you got to be able to make concise plays, get it done. I think if you're in the bottom eight, it's all about survival at this point, right? You just need to make it into top eight. You want to make sure you're able to make it into those prelims. Honestly, it's going to be hard because if you make it into those prelims, you got what? One day off? If you have that day off, you better be working overtime because it's going to be a <laughs> tough one. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some monster squads coming here in the next just a couple days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just around the bend, so uh, you know you gotta get all the all the the prep play in that you can find along the way. But still, looking at it, I mean, we can see so many teams really, really close to hitting it up into the top nine, right? Insanity, they're gonna be the gatekeepers at this point in time. Fourteen points is gonna be the requirement. So Ruch, Moneymakers, Inco, all just two points away from getting a spot up into those prelims. Mm, yeah, so. Oh, gonna have to put in that work for sure. Meanwhile, there's that battle for first place. Who's gonna be able to make it straight to the finals? Still don't have to even worry about those partnership teams until a little bit later on. So we will see what happens here. As we're looking at Ruch over in Milta. <laughs> holding it down over there. Meanwhile, we got Inko hit over in apartments and school. Doing a little split, getting looted up. I like that ruch you said with the Spanish flavor coming in on the side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, dude. They, we oh. want to hear them making that sound at the end of the day, though. You know what I'm mm. saying? Mm. We want them to be hyped up, ready to go into the prelims. So, uh, man, look at the... Look at where they're standing right now. They're in 10th place with only 12 points. This is a this is a this is pretty much a make-or-break game for them at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they're able to get a good game here, they're going to be pretty confident going into top eight. If not, they're going to have to just go absolute desperate time into Miramar, and that's not the place they want to be. You know, speaking of that, you know, teams like Intense Game, you know, they were such a strong squad before. You know, they had a lot of roster changes, uh, but, you know, we haven't really seen them really shine to what they have in the past, and they're currently in 14th place. We know this org has potential... Hopefully, we can see them live up to it here. Another team, another name I recognize very well is Inko as well, down mm. in 12th place. So, this is that time right here, the last Aaron Gale of the day. And it could be of your tournament life if you don't do well here. Yeah, it's going to be pressure, right? So, I mean, as we know, at least two, one or two of the players in the current Inko squad. Uh, we also did see them at the PMGC. So, we know that they have that experience, right? They've been there, mm -hmm. they've rubbed shoulders with all these intense teams. So it's definitely going to be a case of whether or not they can actually muster that talent and just put the work in. Because, I mean, two points, right? It's not that much that they need to just get up into the top nine. Of course, that being said, Insanity, they are going to be looking to just lock it down. But also a team like Moneymakers, right? Regardless of what happens for them here, their name is still going to hold true, but they're going to make money. But obviously, you don't want to make just that. You want to get into those late spots. And, uh, well, you got to work your way on through. Royals of War, though. I like this. Bringing in a bit of an upset. And this time around, Vitali is going to be the first one down Ooh. on his knees. 
God, he's gonna get thirsty here, 100%. So, oh, God, absolute brutal loss. Batalia was making some crazy plays that we saw in just the last game, right? So, for Inko to lose him early on, ooh, that's gonna hurt big time. Well, it's part of the game, right? You just gotta find another way to keep on pushing on. Meanwhile, the Falcons also gotta start now to disengage from that far southern drop that we saw over in towards Novo as they slowly make their way further up towards the north. I'm curious to see how they're going to look to rotate, right? Are they going to maybe opt for that eastern bridge or are they going to go the long way and make a move for the western bridge? Mm, it's really interesting. You know, different teams have different strategies on how they decide to rotate. You know, uh, I don't really get to talk about it too much, but there's a perfect distance in between uh, when you're trying to do like a four vehicle rotation. Because if you're too spread apart, if you find a team, that first person gets thirsted and the rest can't support, right? Mm. If you're too close together, your whole squad can get wiped out, right? So there's that yeah. perfect distance where you can you can still spot and support teammates in case they get hurt. Team Falcons, though, they just said, you know what? We're going to send Icy out on a bike. Icy, go <laughs> get our spot. Figure us out where we're going to be. And we're going to be fine with that. So a lot of trust in your in your scout there to... Get that rotation going. I'm, I'm happy to see that IC at least was able to change that uh, the two wheel for four wheels, right? It just mm -hmm. gives a, a little bit more manageability when it comes to moving on through. Speaking about manageability, though, look at what we've got cooking up in Center Zone, right? It is going to be the players there from Faction Brazil now having to fend off so many teams that could come into contest. I mean, we've got Inko in the mix there. We got the Zebra Masters as well knocking on the door. High fives up to the north, so it's gonna be a pretty sweaty spot to play on. Oh yes, indeed it is. And you can just see I see just trying to get a little bit more loot. He only has a level one helmet on right now, and he's rocking an M16 DBS. So you can see him just desperately probably trying to find an M4. Some to spray for some distance. There's that helmet. There you go. Nice little upgrade right there. Meanwhile, high fives. They know where they're at. Yeah, High Fives is one of those teams that's so high on the leaderboards, they're just going to continue to play their own game, right? Just play, survive, get some points on the board, maybe hope that the Falcons slip up a little bit or we have a bigger game than them <laughs> and try to fight for that first place. Yeah, I mean, there's so much opportunity available for them here. It doesn't seem like there are going to be two phase just yet. In the meanwhile, Faction Brazil going to see... If they can maybe find the Cookie Monster around the bend. I mean, Inko starting to move up. Seven, I like the fact that they just on the opposite edge of that ridge. We get a wipe down. I mean, Snipes with great awareness coming through your confection. 100%. Yeah, they don't want to make that same mistake they made in that last game there. That one really, really hurt them. So they got to play consistently. They got to put in that work. Next zone is about to pop here soon. Again, this is very similar to that last one. So... You know, the Falcons did a great job in that last game, working their way through Pachinki. Oh, they get blessed in this one, though. This is a very solid circle for them. They don't have to go too far at all. They can just stay in their home area. Potato Hill is going to be a very big spot of contention coming up very, very soon. And we can already see teams on the move immediately. Yep, one of those teams, of course, being in the players from the side of Invictus team. So we are yet to see Invictus... Uh, climb up, right, and get more than uh, a single digit there next to their name. So hopefully this could be a match in which we see a little bit of that uh, action now start to unfold for them. Meanwhile, Zebra Master again Ooh. coming through with a very, very sneaky angle. Come on, there we go. <laughs> Picking his head up little by little. He said, should I? Nope. Should I? Yep. And unfortunately <laughs> not able to get that. No oh, he looks like he's going to get one right here, though. He sure Ooh. does. Actually, it was from one of his teammates from that off angle. So, wow, they get that secure real quickly. Zebra Master put in some work on this Pachinki side there. And that is Faction Brazil getting another player knock. Ooh, nice little shots, though. They're good angle. Trying to just uh, slow them down a little bit, but it isn't enough to save their teammate. So, they're going to lose two players. Faction Brazil having a rough one after that last game. Well, and I mean, uh, to add to it, look at this Icy just going to work, finding Brog and the rest of Gizmo out in the open. Hugo is like, no, no, no, no, no, get me out of this corner. 
but I love the suppressive play, or rather aggressive play coming through from the Falcons. Be bold in the meanwhile, still got quite a bit of that uh, recovery to do, as they do find themselves pretty far out of zone. Falcons though, I mean, they're just going to try and lock it down. Yeah, I mean, they're in a weird position on the leaderboards. They don't have too much of a lead to where they are, uh, you know, they're comfortable just playing passive. So they got to be able to put some points on this board here. Um, but they don't want to have just a regular game either. So they're definitely in that position of where they just kind of have to play it a little bit slower. But I don't want them to that to I don't want that to make them second guess themselves. If they see an opening, they got to take it. Yeah, I mean, looking at the stakes, there's not a lot of opportunity for any hesitancy to come through. So you got to commit to it as quickly as you can. Now, speaking of like the Sky, going to be looking to pop a few in over towards B Bold. But I like this widespread that they are using to get themselves situated. But of course, not out of the woods, right? We still have uh, Hura also trying to regain a little bit of ground. But I think slow steady steps on their end is going to pay off. Mm hmm. Let's see what Inko is going to do. Inko losing that er the Vitali early on really, really hurt them. So you can see them just kind of lolling around trying to figure out what's the best thing to do here. Faction Brazil going to hold it down for as long as they can. Zebra Master, though, are not content with just him staying there. They're going to push this and try to get that next point. And he's in big trouble because he doesn't have any support. They're coming for him. You know, it's pretty sad to see Faction Brazil taking such a wide split at this point in time. I mean, we've got loots. Uh really really far away as we take a look at whether or not zebra master zebra master can get themselves in here i mean it's a 1v4 so this could be a very easy clap now for zebra uh they just need to find that utility put it in exactly the right spot and with that oh Fuck yeah almost locking it in oh nice pre-fire through the smoke though <laughs> tries to get that confirm and he does it so Another mistake from another team in a, you know, full squad versus one. Losing player by player. This could be, that nade could be dangerous. Oh, doesn't get the knock. Instead, tries to go for that heal. Gets taken out just like that. So, heck, does go with one point. But Zebra Master, gonna go ahead and get the better of Faction Brazil. Yeah, things are looking a little bit challenging on the Zebra Master side of things, mm -hmm. but uh, high buys though, I mean, they've also been able to just get themselves positioned right there up into that center zone. So I think this could be quite a favorable spot. Yes, not the best defense, but uh, a great opportunity to find some rotating teams in the process. Of course, looking at Inco as well, I think this could also provide them a bit of an opportunity, especially over towards this eastern side. 100%. You can see Inko in a battle with Rook. Let's see what they decide to do. High fives on the other end. They're in that spot where they need to put some points on the board. They want that first place position. And honestly, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're any of the squads going to come into the prelims, those partnership teams, I don't think you even want to deal with the Falcons at all. So I think you're rooting for them to just make it on over to the finals because... That squad is going to be coming for that top eight. Meanwhile, hoorah with that DBS putting in some work. Be bold. Trying to have a repeat finish, Ooh. but they lost all their players. It's up to just Fran to make something happen. He's trying to do it with some nades. Yeah, trying to make that difference happen here. But let's see whether or not it is going to be on the cards for them. Nice little Ooh. utility through the window. And that is hoorah showing no fear as they get yet another Elam on the board. Through the wall, man. That is how you do it. So, hoorah. Finishing it up. Four eliminations for them. And they are sitting... Actually, five total. So, they're sitting really pretty so far. You can see them starting to make that push into the next circle. And where are we headed? Tell me, DK. Where are we going? Uh, South. Go south. South. South. South. South. <laughs> oh, yeah. South Almost. of the island. Almost. <laughs> south of the island. We'll take it. We'll take it there. So that is pretty much one of the most southern Zy island zones. Pachinki is now out of play. So Zebra Moss, you know, they're, they're pretty upset with you on that one. They're going to have to go ahead and make that rotation on South Falcons outside of the zone. Going to go down there as well. Meanwhile, Death Wolves in a good position again in this circle. But they got to put some points on the board. They're gonna, they need some eliminations here. 
Yep, the pressure is going to be on their shoulders. Ooh, nice hit though, all the way up on towards the Falcons. I mean, I think that's a good play for Zebra Master, just alleviating a little bit of the pressure, trying to open that away, moving forward up into a zone, but still got to watch out, because there's still quite a few dangers lurking in the shadows. Speaking of shadows though, I mean, uh -oh. Icy getting ready for action. They do get that knock player up, so they are chilling right now. Let's see, it's Rafa He's trying to figure out what he's going to do here. Oh, the run over, <laughs> Nene Bete. Get eaten up alive, but Nunez getting that revenge. And uh, he should be able to get this res off. So Nene Bete crawling his way on over. Smokes come out quick from Nunez. And he's going to get that res. Yep, the interaction's pretty on point. Gosh, Let's see whether or not Hugo is going to bust this one out. Ooh, sneaky play. But I see body so... awareness is crazy. <laughs> the determination is insane here. He knows how to just stick his body out just a mm. little bit to where he's like, if I get shot, I'm going to get shot on my shoulder. I'll be okay. But he's still just trying to get hunt down those angles. And then he realizes that, you know what? It's better. We're out of position. Let me just get with my team and get ready to try to push into this next zone. And you can just see them moving little by little. They don't really need too much cover. They're just going to get it done with their gun skill. Yeah, and I mean, Falcon's really good at playing the bait and switch at this point, right? Just luring the teams on the edge, trying to get them to fall for the trap that they've got set for them. But I mean, Smoke Gaming, they're not going to be budging, right? They're just listening on, just paying attention to what's happening around them. Meanwhile, Gizmo now starts to push on forward. Up comes Bro. Quick dip up behind the rock, but Frog now going to be risking it all as they push on forward. Quick, making quick work of them. Down they go. Top also getting found. Malin is down as well. So now all the pressure is going to be riding on the shoulders here for Bro. And this could be the play now for the Falcons to get yet another quick elimination on their side. Oh, the Bro is going to have to make something happen. He's going to have to do it quick. He's going to be eating up a lot of blue zone here. So he's going to go down pretty much no matter what. Uh, because they're going to shoot that buggy. I was about to say, they're about to shoot that buggy. Make sure he can't go move. And that's how you do it there. So beautifully done. Team Falcons are going to have to go for that quick move they're gonna pick up that player put him on his shoulders run him into the next zone uh, look at the support I mean, that, that, that it gives a, it gives a whole different meaning to baggage right it's just picking a teammate up and moving them on forward but there we go falcons back on their feet now it's gonna be smoke gaming look at to see if they can get a slice of the action doesn't seem like there's any clear way to find it just yet but also we are going to be seeing our next phase now being delivered Dude, that's why Team Falcons are so tough to beat, man. These guys are just constant. You have to take them out on their first try. Otherwise, they're just going to keep rezzing and finding angles and just taking you apart second by second. Uh, next zone does go on up. Very similar. Pretty much centers up from the last one. So nothing too crazy. Smoke Gaming are on the edge. But meanwhile, oh, all these teams are going to have to get moving. And that is not a good shift for Inko. Yeah, the pressure is going to be pretty tough on this one. I like this from Ruchlor, having a pretty close angle onto Inko. And I mean, even the players there from uh, the Death Wolves could definitely pack in quite a bit of pressure onto mm. the side here. Nenebete, Nunez just holding nice and steady, waiting for any opportunity to present itself, but nothing as of yet. Yeah, Death Wolves just happy to hold this position for now. They're just trying to put some points on the board. You can see them trying to look down, trying to figure out as much information they can get. Um, I would be, I'm kind of shocked they didn't try to hold that hill and just get some gatekeeping going. Instead, I think they're going to just try to prioritize this little tiny dip. It's not a very good one, though, because this next zone, all eyes are going to be on them. I mean, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Speaking about the witch, though, look at that play up onto IC. Quick confirmation coming through from the players there. Now, where will this next shift take us? Victor's locking in more points on the board. Inko also trying to clear a bit of a way. Got to hop in those vehicles because the big bad blue zone is on its way. Smoke now facing off against the Falcons. A quick little reposition here from Ninho. Hoping to find a little bit of something, but Rook doesn't make it into zone. He doesn't. And you can just see right now the rest of Invictus on the rotation. Trying to find a spot, but there's teams and players everywhere. Here comes the rotation. Maybe he's going to try to go for him for a run over. That's exactly what he's doing. He tries to catch him while they have the nades in their hands. 
but they're able to salsa their way out of that one. Maybe he goes for it again. Nope, he says, nope, one time's a charm. I'm gonna stand back, try to throw some nades, see if I can catch one of these players from Intense Game Off. That one's gonna be off the mark there. But the rest of Invictus, they're in a good position to gatekeep. They have three eliminations here, and they need them all. Yeah. Oh, he's going for it again. He's gonna do it again. Nope, never mind. It's like. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful clipping. angle. Oh! Oh! Yep. The rest back. of his team, they need to come quickly. That was a little bit too mm -hmm. bold from him. The timing could have been a little bit off. Maybe he called the push, and the rest of the team said that they were there, and a little, just a little tiny miscommunication is all it takes, guys. And just like that, Invictus falls apart. Hey, though. Silence came through with M24. Nice. Little bit of multi to seal the fight there, but now... Ooh. It's still going to be down to smoke to see if they can get the heat in onto the high fires. Up comes the death walls. You can see Higgers super low, but gets the pick up, and that's the high fires. Oh my goodness. High five, Zebra Monster, a bold all out. So Team Falcons in a huge position, right, to further that first place dominance right here. They have three eliminations, 37 points. Nobody in the lobby is even near them here. So... Uh, Man, this is going to be a tough one to swallow for teams like High Fives and the rest of the players in that top five. But a, a big opportunity for these teams at the bottom to put some big points on the board and try to make it into the top eight. Yeah, I mean, well, 12, uh, second to sixth place is down for the count. So, you know, the gates are wide, wide open. So if you want to get the rush, now is the time to play. But speaking of playing... It's going to be Falcons now, just playing with their food here as they take aim over onto the place here from Intense Game. It's going to be Nose just sneaking through in the grass. You can hear the footsteps. Zelo might be the first victim. Let's see whether or not the Falcons are going to look to <laughs> get some of the action going here. Yeah, here they go. Now they're just saying that, you know what, they, they've been looking at the leaderboards here. Almost gets run over. Wow, Ooh. down to 1 HP, but does get that run over there. Intense game. Just looking to make it happen with a buggy. Gets taken out immediately there. So, man, these vehicle plays coming in so clutch towards the end. And Intense Game just trying to get those shots through the smoke. They're trying to keep their tournament hopes alive here. They know that they need this game, but Royals of War are coming to shut them down, and they do. Well, what a play, though. Royals of War picking it up, cleaning house, but now they're not out of the woods, not out of the jungle. As we can see here, Falcons trying to pack it in. Top though, sitting with all the eliminations for the squad. So action needs to make a little bit of that happen here. As the Royals of War, they're mobilizing, getting ready for the push. The Blues are nipping at the heels. Speaking about nipping though, the Money Makers also getting right down to oh. business as they defend against Insanity. They need a big game right here. They're down in 11th place and they get shut down. Wow, the, the, the DBS pump action. Is just too deadly. Here goes, speaking of action, right? Look at him trying to throw all the utility he can as a solo player. Gets the knock. <laughs> Goodness gracious. This team is just disgusting. Oh, try to go for the 2v1. He might get it too. Look at that. Look at that movement. Taking that gun off to get that extra run speed. He's got the DBS out and good Ooh. by Royals of War. I mean, that was smooth. That was so dang smooth, but of course it's not over just yet. We still have Tonka and Teammate now coming up the rear, looking to see if they can avenge their squad. The Blaze just following through all the way. Even Smoke will be feeling the heat as you can see Marlin speaking in through the window. Action getting spotted out of the reach, but so far managing to evade the majority of the hits, but not the needed ones. And down they go. Falcons out in first. Oh boy, not much he can do, but they still put up some points on the board here. Very tough in the last circle of the game, most likely. Coming right up. Let's see what happens here with Smoke Gaming. Here on the edge, trying to make some plays here. This could be an insanity win, but Royals of War, we talked about those teams, right? That were so desperate, needed to put some points on here. Royals of War were definitely in that bucket. Let's take a look here. Is Insanity looking to have a good, solid back-to-back -back performance here at the end? I mean, look at the drift bar. Just playing, playing so, so favorably here for Insanity. Everybody else.
needs to push on forward. I mean, Insanity, they've got the only compounds in the zone. They've got it under lock and key, but now comes the hard work. They're going to have to defend it as the Royals of War try to rotate up, pushing over towards the western side. Goldgoat! Oh! Explosion does pick them up, but Tonka still in the fight. Oh, here they go. Tonka still trying to make things happen. They're all trying to push into the circle. Insanity has that zone. They're trying to gatekeep a little bit, make it harder for these teams to rotate on in. Smoke's in trouble. They do have three players knocked. It's just Imaki up for their team. And I don't... Yeah, he's not in position to get these reses off with Death Wolves right behind him. Uh-oh, Insanity actually giving them a little bit of a break here. That's really unfortunate for them as Insanity... Gonna try to go ahead and take out Imaki. If he's able to do it, they'll have this entire area to themselves and most likely the chicken dinner. Let's see if they can get that play to happen here. Royals of War still holding on to the edge of Zorin. I mean, I appreciate this play coming through from Insanity, right? Just so active on all the fronts, but they still have quite a bit of a threat to deal with. So you can see Smoke now. Trying to go in for the pickup, trying to get that raise, but the nade ends it right there. Down to the final three teams we go. Insanity look like they could maybe have this one in the bag. Oh my gosh. Let's see if they're able to get it here. They need this chicken dinner. They tried so hard in that last one, but that zone going over to be bold uh, spoiled them up here. So they have these buildings locked down. They get that knock there. It looks all but over. They just got to make this lash push onto the Death Wolves, but we've seen so many teams get taken out by just one player. They cannot make a mistake here. They have to push together. That's going to be a very essential play now. You see, Insanity trying to find the play to make here. Royals of War still going to be just trying to bring in a little bit of a contribution. But I mean, they have a golden chance. There we go. Insanity. Woo! Closing it up for the Death Wolves as they get shipped on out of here. And we're down to the final two squads. Huge game for Insanity. Eight eliminations on their side. That's going to put them in a good position to get top eight and make it on over to those prelims coming up. In just a couple of days, folks, Royals of War were almost out of this tournament. They were all, all the way at the bottom of the leaderboards. And with a top two finish here, that'll put them in contention. But they're going to have to get it done in Miramar coming up. Only two more matches right after this. This is an insanity win. 1,000%. The only way that Royals of War win this is with the Miracle at this point. Mm. I have to agree with you on that one. But let's see. Can they get that? It's going to be a pretty tough play. Don't go already taking damage. Yeah, there's nowhere left to move from this rock. It is going to be such a tough angle. Here we go. Insanity. I mean, they came pretty close in the previous match. Now they're going to try to double down. Might not have that chicken slip from their fingers. As it's one down, one more to go. One play could give them exactly what they are so, so looking oh. for. Beautiful nade. Oh, almost on the money. Marlon, here he goes. 4-3. Hey! <laughs> and they are out of here. Let's go. Beautifully done right there. A big, big game on the side of Insanity. You can see their excitement here. Two back-to-back -back games. This is what I love to see. I love to see teams that, you know what, didn't have a good couple games to start things off. You know, it's hard, especially with so much pressure, only one day, do or die, have a conversation with each other, change up their gameplay, and come back strong. And that's exactly what Insanity does. Very hard to do at this level. I mean, I was waiting for Insanity from group stages. I was waiting for that Insanity to come back, right? And <laughs> now, well, they did it, right? Game number four, they stepped up, they came to the party, and what a party it was. Also still ending with those double-digit elims. Man, beautifully done right there. Double-digit eliminations and the chicken dinner, especially coming off of the second-place finish, was just absolutely massive for them. So hopefully they can continue to do that same strategy. If they're able to do that here, we're going to see them in the finals. But you know what? You know, I'll tell you what. Speaking of the finals coming up soon... 
Team Falcons are looking pretty locked in here. If you're High Fives and you're Zebra, what do you think you do here in these last two Miramars, DK? I mean, you gotta try and be creative, I guess, right? Um, because, I mean, there's so, so much here, right? So I think for, for like, Zebras, um, they, they just gotta do what they were doing, I would say, back in game number two and three, right? Things were working out quite well for them. They were able to still keep a lot of that consistency going. I mean, even just looking at the aggression that they showed up here, it looked pretty good, but unfortunately, you know, they gotta try and just add on top of that. Mm, yeah, I mean, honestly, if I'm in their position and if I'm on their coach, I'm saying you gotta have to find Team Falcons at this point. Like you can't let them run. They're not. They can't be trusted. They're too good. They are too good. They're gonna. <laughs> they're too consistent, right? They're gonna put points on the board almost no matter what. The only reason why they didn't in, today was because of a military base finish, and they were in the complete worst side of the map. You know, um, so that was fortunate for the rest of the teams. But you could just see them here. I mean, we just saw what Action was able to do all by himself, right? Yeah. These guys are so tough to take down. It's like one player is almost two. So I think at this point, High Fives, Zebra need to do something to slow them down if they want to take that first place finish. Otherwise, just get ready for the prelims coming up. Yeah. I mean, so this is the, the big decider, right? As you said, do you want the do you want the tickets or you want to go the prelim route? I mean, still either which way they've made it up into the qualifying positions, it now just comes through as to for which thing do they want to qualify directly. So yeah, but I gotta say, intense, really crazy plays that we had uh, coming to the end of this match. Insanity! I love how they just stepped it up, and again, numbers going a really long way. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, and going in at the perfect time too that's mm. what's so great about it is i love to see teams that have that clutch factor and that is something that they do for sure so i'm gonna go take a look at the uh elimination leaders here see who was able to frag out the hardest and wow look at that zebra masters 10 eliminations getting it done here yeah i mean that's just their one player right between <laughs> getting wow. the insane double digit play of course followed very closely with a team teammate there as we can see neil zada just locking in right on their heels no fear though from hoorah playing a really good position um i mean we did see no fear also really clutching up in this match and i think it was very well deserved from their end as well yes it was so let's take a look here also who's going to be the mvp at the end of this here it's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, it's going to be Marlon from Insanity Esports. Six eliminations. We saw him right there towards the end make some really sick plays with that nade. Uh, 222 healing as well. I mean, once they got this position, the zone came here, and they really executed perfectly. So that's what I like to see because they, they needed to win that match 100%, and they did. Yeah. I mean, I think it's safe to say that Marlon strung on their way to victory. Because uh, the last three Elims we saw come through here from Marlin was all with those utilities. So, mm -hmm. you know, definitely has the range. And of course, well, nothing wrong with a little bit of strong arm play to get yourself that winner winner chicken dinner. 100%. Take a look here at the match rankings. That's 20 total points. Oh my goodness. So we saw Insanity. Uh, I think here at the top of the day, after match number two, insanity was in 14th place okay so they were in 14th place they had a really bad two games they were they literally had two total points after two games so after this 20 point game here i wonder just how far they rocket launched themselves up the leaderboards i think that is going to be a really good question to see and of course well we are going to be taking a look at those points to see exactly how much of an impact that chicken can bring to the place that i mean six spot jump third place <laughs> goodness gracious two back-to-back -back monster games and these guys are in the run for the golden ticket at this point there's still two more matches if they have two more yeah. games like they just did, they could be going straight mm -hmm. to the finals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, consistency is key, right? And they are they are 
proof of that, right? As you said, started off in 14th position and now sitting all the way up in a very comfortable third place. I mean, yeah, it pays off to be pretty re re re relentless. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how you do it. They got that clutch factor. They proved that they can get it done during hard situations. Now it's time to keep that energy, baby, right? It's time to even get more clutch. Go beyond the clutch, right? That's what they got to do here. So they're in third place uh, with 34 points. That is a nine point difference from Team Falcon. So if they do want that first place finish, they're going to have to go crazy here because nine points is a hard gap to beat, especially against uh, a team like Team Falcons. Well, I mean, if they, if they play another game like the one we just saw, it might be possible for them. But of course, you know, it's also possible a little bit of that desert action. So we are going to be hopping into a break. So be sure to stay tuned and see you guys right back in a short few moments.
Welcome back, everybody. Of course, guys, do not forget the anniversary crate event surprise launch. Popular items make a return from the 3rd, actually the 8th of March, all the way up until the 30th of April. The daily first draw is only 30 UC, guys. There's multiple popular outfits and firearms, including the full set, which I have. It's beautiful. Uh, the anniversary <laughs> set, that M4, of course, drop the base, Scar L, and loads of other items await. So get in the game, pop some of them crates. Hopefully you get some of them nice skins, but you know what? It's time for some Miramar, baby. That's right. The last two matches of the day. First Miramar. Here we go. This is a very important match here uh, because those teams on that bottom of the leaderboards, this is their last chance, in my opinion. Like, they need yep. to do something huge if they want to continue and make it on into the prelims. I mean, it's going to be now or never if they want to get those seats so uh yeah they gotta go get them but i'm curious to see where exactly the teams are gonna have to head in this game right because i mean let's be honest zones in miramar sometimes can be quite interesting with what it gives to these teams 100 percent. that's why like looking at the the formula for this match right the the original schedule that's why i was talking mm. about playing it maybe extra aggressive in sandhawk get those early points and then, you know, in Erangel, you really have to just get that consistency going because Miramar is going to be a little bit of a wild card. Anything can happen here with these circles, and you don't want to leave it up to chance. And unfortunately, I mean, it does happen, right? Some teams have bad games, bad rotations, a couple mistakes, and then all of a sudden, you're at the bottom of the leaderboard. So the teams that are in that position, okay? Um, we're talking about, and even Be Bold is right there on the line. So, Be Bold was, they're in 8th place with 22 points. Faction Brazil is right below them, only one point difference. So, 22 hmm. points is the current cutoff, um, all the way down to 15th, right? Yeah. Gizmo has 11 points. So, a, a good game here, possibly a chicken dinner, could put them in the running. But it, it has to be chicken dinner time for them. Mm. Um, yeah. and Invictus with only four points in four matches, they're going to need a miracle at this point if they want to make it on in. Well, as we know, uh, you know, miracles are not necessarily all too impossible when it comes to, uh, PUBG. Even the map of Murmur itself could definitely present a few amazing opportunities here. But I mean, even looking at like Faction Brazil, right? They do sit with a winner winner chicken dinner under their belt, but they are just Barely holding on, right? Three points ahead of the Royals of War. So, yep, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this match. But talking about pressure, though, I think the zone also looks exceptional, right? All the way over on towards El Pozo. So it is going to allow for quite a bit of a playthrough for the teams within that eastern side of the zone. Yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, we talk about miracles. I will call this circle a little bit of a mini miracle on the side of Invictus because they were dead center of the circle here. So they're going to have a really good position going into this zone. So if they want to be able to clutch up that chicken dinner and desperately, you know, make it into that top eight, um, now's their chance. And this is the only chance they have. So can mm. Luke afford to even lose a player early at this point? Like, you know, earlier games, if you had a, you know, a squad wipe and you lost a player, that could have been okay, right? It worked out for high fives. But at this point, you need to make it into that last final top three with a ton of eliminations i mean that's going to be the way to go right you can't really try and play it any other way so uh yep focus is going to have to be on the foreground in this one at least for all the worlds of wars we can see up in towards los leones uh they do have Ruch just towards their southern side but this being los leones they're still quite far away right and mm -hmm. obviously as we know looking at the map this is one of those maps where things appear much closer than they actually are so there is a bit of hope still for teams to get themselves pretty well situated. I also like this angle coming through here from Hura, uh, all the way between La Cobreria as well as the Crater Fields. So there's a lot of spread opportunity for them to really try and hunker down, get the loot, and then make a potential shift into, I don't know, either Southern Zone or maybe even a bit of high ground. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's not over. You're, you're so right. It's not over yet for pretty much any of these teams. Any of these teams can still make it into top eight, but they but there's different levels to it, right? 
Uh, these teams at the bottom, like Invictus, they need a chicken dinner with monster eliminations uh, to even stand a chance at this point. Um, some of the other teams at the bottom are going to need something similar. And, of course, those teams in that top eight just need to stay consistent. Now, you know, the other thing that we're focusing on, of course, is that first place. Team Falcons, mm. in your opinion, which teams do you think have a chance to possibly unseat them at this point? Well... I mean, looking at what we saw come from Insanity just in the last match, I think they have uh, a pretty high probability of potentially bringing in a, a disruption to the Falcons. Uh, high fives, they've also been pretty consistent across the board. Um, so maybe they could be a little bit of something to come through. So I would say, yeah, I would maybe rely a little bit more on the side of Insanity. And okay. yourself? Yeah, you know what? I think I'd probably be in the same boat. I mean, they've shown that they can definitely clutch up when needed. Uh, they have the most momentum coming into this match. Mm. That's for sure. I mean, they just jumped up uh, all the way from second to last to third place, right? In just a couple of matches. So that's a no, you don't just do that if you're an average team, you know? Mm. So hopefully they can capitalize on that, keep that same energy, and just continue that little hot streak that they got going on. And we could definitely something see something happen here. Um, in order for that to actually be a possibility, though, the Falcons have to go out early here. They have mm. to. Because you really need them to put up a donut, you know, or maybe one, two points. And you have to have a good game. Because with how they're playing right now, just seeing, you know, one player pretty much you know, gatekeep an entire team by themselves, they're going to put some points on the board and going to be very, very tough to catch. Yeah. I mean, once they, once they start finding that momentum, it's so, so challenging to put a stop to that. I mean, we've seen that in a lot of the matches here today, right? When the Falcons get that ball going, there's not much that can disrupt them along the way. But another team that we've also seen been that that's been quite consistent so far today has also been uh, Zebra Masters, right? So they placed in the top five in the first three matches, and it's only in the last game where they ended in 10th place as opposed to, you know, finishing well within that top five. 100%. Hmm. Well, you can see the calm before the storm. I mean, this is very much, you can just almost feel the tension in the air, right? Teams <laughs> playing very, very carefully right now, very tight. I mean, this is where, these are the championship rounds. Like, you have to pull out every single stop. There's no excuses. Your communication has to be extra sharp. Your positioning, you have to just really be extra, extra careful. And uh, you can see Aksha just trying to look for some last-second loot. He finds that M4 in DBS, so he's pretty well set up here. And we're going to look at that team, that Disruptor, right? Insanity. Looking to just try and get as much loot as they can get their hands on. Yeah, well, loot is going to be essential, especially for this early stage of the game. But let's see what is going to happen there with the players from Faction Brazil. Not exactly having a clear line of sight as we saw down on towards the edge here. But again, right, that elevation could definitely benefit them quite a bit. I mean, Falcons also just working their, th their way through uh, a little bit of potential elevation here again. Looking at the map of Miramar, I think this is where a strategy along those lines could definitely benefit a team if you want to be a little bit of a nuisance and not necessarily get caught in any of these hot, heated game plays in the early stage. Yeah, 100%. Got to play it concise. You got to be on point here. The one thing that's kind of tough, though, in these kind of positions in this game is like the longer you go without getting into a fight, it's like your hands almost cool down a little bit. And, uh, they definitely fire up, though, when you get a circle like this. Goodness gracious. Ooh. I mean, this is a southern shift here. <laughs> so we're going all the way to the south, of course. I mean, hey, it wouldn't be the global open without some, uh, you know, shifty <laughs> circles. And that's going to be a big one right there. So this hard rotation, we're going to see a lot of teams. Like, it looks like Insanity is going to wise up, wrap around, and go to that hard shift side. You know that hard shift side is open, and you can see a lot of teams just rushing towards it at this point. Yeah, I mean, you know, La Dreyera, a very, very exciting place to play through. Of course, also Monte Nuevo alongside that. I think it's going to be so, so crazy. But looking at intense game, though, again, playing off of the high ground, just peering into the opponents, and no one is safe, right? They can try and rotate up. 
But, uh, well, if Intense Game has any say in it, they are going to try and stop a few of those rotations. Meanwhile, Inko going to be huddled up here. Good spread that they've got within the compound. Again, now, this is the trick of the compounds, right? You don't want to be too close together because one well-placed nade, as we've seen in the previous matches, really plays one Ooh. major upset. You're not messing around. That is so true. One nade is all it takes here. So you got to make sure you're in the right position with your squads. You can see the Falcons. I was talking about that perfect distance, right? When you're driving all together. And they're trying to keep that in line here. High fives do spot some players on the rotation. They're going to try to avoid them right now. Yeah, early engagements, especially with the hard shift, you want to avoid, avoid at all costs. Mm. Because if you get into a fight, there's going to be a team already rotating and looking to third party it. So I don't blame teams right now for trying to play it very careful, especially on a hard shift. Well, speaking about hard shifts, it is going to be... Invictus and hi is now getting right down to business. A little bit of crossfire happening across the way here as well. But it's no surprise, right? Up in Monte Nuevo, <laughs> there's already so many positions that a team can occupy. Falcons just going to be a little bit more towards that eastern side. So not immediately involved in the altercations. But as we see action now starting to move on up, there could be quite a bit of carnage just on the horizon. 100 percent so let's see what they plan to do here is invictus that team i was talking about here at the start all the way at the bottom of the leaderboards it's chicken dinner time for them they either get a chicken dinner or they go home and they know that so they're trying to play this very carefully they are in monte nuevo this is a tough position and the reason why i say that is because the zo this is still very early the zone can go anywhere and if it decides to go like another hard shift south, for some reason, these zones, when they when they get a hard shift like that, they just love to go in the same direction. If it does do that, they're going to have a hard time leaving. Mm. I think that's part of the challenge, right? Really finding a good exit strategy in and around all these compounds, buildings, and so many angles you got to watch on all fronts. I mean, we've got uh, the players from Faction Brazil still holding nice and steady just north i is also trying to see if they can maybe find a little bit of an opportunity. But, I mean, Smoke, surprisingly quiet up on the high ground. Mm, yeah, just playing it carefully right now because I think they realize, too, that this zone could definitely come up. Wow, beautiful Ooh. spray there from Invictus. That's going to get the, the thumbs nice and warm. They're not going to be able to get the finish, but still a nice knock in general. So, just some players poking at each other. You can see Invictus. You know, I like the fact that they put that bike inside the house. That's yeah. how important those vehicles are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the first time I think I've ever seen a team do that. Um, so, you know, respect to them. Uh, that's... <laughs> yeah. You, you got to get take care of your vehicles. I mean, a garage is one thing, but, you know, just park it indoors, lock it behind a proper door, and you know that nobody's going to mess with that thing. Um, also curious to see you know, what the Death Wolves are going to be doing here. I mean, it seems like they're getting a little bit unrestly, right? They're just starting to move about, getting that mobility going, waiting in anticipation for someone to present the opportunity. Now, let's see what opportunity we're going to see here. Coming up, high fives just kind of holding some angles and Victus doing the same thing. He did end up losing his helmet, so he's going to try and search for one here. Ugh, that's the unfortunate part about these kind of like poke shots. All you're doing is just losing armor. So mm. I don't know why some teams opt to do it. I never understood it because you're just losing armor, wasting resources when you know you're not going to get the finish. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a interesting strategy to use. Sometimes it works, other times, uh, not so much, but, you know, each to their own. Speaking of which, though, the players here from B-Bolt also still have to cover a little bit of ground to get themselves nice and snug into that zone. They are going to be looking at Bruno, looking for change. I don't think Bruno is going to find any change, though. Yeah, I don't think so either. Moneymaker is trying to get some intel. Just to go, we talked about how important this game was, right? We are in about to hit stage four. Not a single player eliminated. <laughs> Not a <laughs> single player is out the game yet. So they are playing it very carefully. Oh, we might have our first, and we're gonna. So um, 
Be bold, losing a player, and it's to the play zone. That's how much these teams want to avoid fights at all costs. They need to get into that end zone, and they need to put some points on the board. Well, that was a, an interesting play then coming through there, as we did see Bruno falling to the blue. Beautiful nade, though, but a little bit of that molly heat rolling down onto Malinzin. Let's see whether or not Gizmo able to contest they still uh -oh. need to just ensure everything is nice and dandy yes they got the pick up in the building but that's one thread out of the way right still a few more to go before they get themselves securely in zone yeah i was about to say speaking of heat the blue zone is going to start hurting this is stage four and once it hits stage five it just starts chunking you you can't really stand in there too long so you can see them trying to hurry it up they only have 20 seconds on the clock they're on the thin side of that circle so it's going to close just a little bit slower for them uh but still they need to find that position and they need to do it quickly we're going to start seeing teams drop like crazy now even death wolves are nading each other that's how excited they are for this match here meanwhile though <laughs> they do get the nade onto nenebete death wolves is oh the triple <laughs> baby that is how you do it Looking to get the finish. Come on, you gotta get the squad wipe. You got the you got the moves. You gotta get the dunk. He misses it. The rest of the team, where are you? No, seven survives. Just a little bit longer. And oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness! You can't. You, when you break the ankles, you gotta get the uh. dunk, DK. You gotta get the dunk. <laughs> oh man, well, I gotta say that was. One hell of an impressive play coming through uh, from <laughs> uh, from the the team there in car. I mean, such a phenomenal defense. That was that was just crazy. So you, you gotta love these plays that the teams are making here. But speaking about plays though, it is gonna be up to the players here, right? Faction Brazil. They are kind of the gatekeepers on the edge of that zone. Still has to get themselves snugly positioned. But, uh, yeah, they've got a little bit of pressure just right behind them as well. So they got to be really, really careful with how they play this northern positioning. Oh, yes, they do. So they got to play it very careful indeed. You can see Gizmo. Uh, that's actually be bold out. That's the eighth place team here, DK. That is huge. So every team below them now know that there is a spot wide, wide open here. Faction Brazil. Uh, now we're going to pretty much catch up to them. So I believe they're tied already with that one elimination they have. But the rest of these squads, they need to put some points on the board sooner rather than later if they want to continue their tournament life. Well, let's see who's going to pick it up though. Ooh, Zebra Master going to be moving in. They do find one. But Faction Brazil not going to be backing out of it just yet. You can see Nelson all just steadily on the edge. Hoping for the angles, praying that they get that play. Oh, the opportunity comes oh. around. But Zebra Master coming in with a beautiful sweep and well, off they go. Yep, off they go indeed. So they're, they're in the hunt for that first place as well. They're not too far off. If they can have a really good game here, they're in it. But this is the team to beat and they have the high ground. These guys are dangerous. You can just hear those shots. I mean, if they even see a speck on the map, they're taking you down, and that's exactly what they're going to be doing to the money makers. Let's see. They're starting to press the action here as Action himself has that nade locked and loaded. Oh, boy, at the bottom. Sees it coming. Sweeves that one. Can he dodge another, though? Action trying to time it perfectly. Oh, that one was really close. And meanwhile, he's just trying to hold that position to buy some time for his team so they don't push. And uh, that's exactly what he's doing, and he's doing it well. Yeah, well, they're going to have to continue with the dip, the dip diving, dodging as best they can. Mm -hmm. Money makers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dip dive, duck and dodge. There That's we go. correct. You've got to hit all four of them. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't count. But what is going to count, though, is for the money makers to get that pickup secured and <laughs> regain a little bit of ground. I mean, they still have a long, long way to go. Smoke oh, gaming. Yeah, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful play though coming through from the high fives. Yeah, beautifully done. I, I was surprised he ran away. He should have let that smoke kind of bloom for a second and then try. But that jump, high fives just instantly said, no, sir. I'm going to get that knock and finish. We need these points bad. And uh, look at that. Wow. High fives just clutching it up. These guys are so good. 
under pressure situations, right? Really tough plays. When they're running out in the open, they're able to get it done. And that is one of the attributes of a championship team. So let's see if they can disrupt the Falcons and make it to the finals. But it's going to be hard because Falcons have a six-point lead going into this match. And they already have four eliminations and counting. I mean, like, where where's it going to end, right? Yeah. Falcons, I again, starting with that momentum. I said it. I said it earlier. I think that if you really wanted that first place, you had to stop them mm. yourself. You know, because <laughs> uh, like, look at this. Yeah, we're gonna see. You know, Ruf get, get one of those knocks, but are they gonna be able to get the finish? No. I mean, like the zone actually is closing, but they're gonna. They have the US. They have the res. This is gonna be a little bit risky. They're gonna have to do kind of a blind send in that vehicle, as Icy trying to do what he does best and hold off an entire team by himself. Well, I mean, it's not is it not exactly unheard of, right? We've seen some pretty intense plays come through here, but Ruch, they really want to try and, I mean, just uh, disrupt everything up for grabs. I mean, if they pull this one off, right, there might still be an opportunity for them to lock in the necessary points to make it up into the top nine, because that's that's where we know the cutoff is, right? Yes. Um, the players from Faction Brazil, sure, they are also then sitting on 22 points, but that's it. So it's a tie for 8th and ninth place with regards to the total points. So there's so much riding on this for Ruch and, of course, the Royals of all. So let's see whether or not Ruch can actually get themselves into the points playing. They need to. They really need to do it here and now. They don't want to wait till the last game because the last game, you're always going to see some shenanigans, right? Because you may see the top two teams. You know, just go for Falcons at this point just to stop them. They have nothing to lose, right? Nothing to lose mm. to if they do that. And sometimes you have teams at the bottom who realize there's nothing that they can do to make it in. And they might just go and disrupt people as well. So now is the time. High fives. <laughs> Definitely not trying to leave things up to chance. Is they're going to get another elimination there. And try to catch Team Falcons Dream with a lay down on that vehicle. Trying to get some spots. But I believe they're at the edge. Invictus, oh, this is what kills me, right? They had such a dominant position. But guess what? First place isn't good enough. You need first place with double digit eliminations. You got to stand up and you got to get to work. Mm hmm. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So let's see who's going to be doing the work, right? Doing the mosters right here when it matters. Mm so much on the line here i mean we've been seeing these teams just cracking it out over the past four games game number five no change no difference just even more pressure being added to that see invictus they're looking for some headshots just trying to put some points on the board but those those shots are way too far away uh rook getting knocked there it's gonna be pretty tough uh oh it's starting to get shot from all different sides and I believe that's high fives, right? Yes, Ooh. just putting in... Actually, no, that's Rules of War. These are these two teams right next to each other on the leaderboards, trying to hunt down that eighth place position. If one of them gets a finish and they realize who's going against them, they're going to play extra hard to try to take him out here and now. And I think the key is also going to be to try and make it at least to that eighth position at the minimum, right? Minimum. Because that's where placement points also start to play in this because going out in 11th uh you're not going to be awarded anything other than the eliminations you've been able to secure so far hura also going to be trying to at least defend the edge of the zone here i mean uh looking at the players from invictus they know what's at stake they know that they're gonna have to hustle as they've not yet hustled in this day so there's quite a bit of pressure starting to build as we get deeper and deeper and we're almost in stage seven Yes, they are. So here we go. Stage seven about to happen. Falcons going for that res. Fact, action has to give it up. He sees them coming. Trying to spot those headshots. Top right next to him. DBS is out, but they're getting picked apart. It's Sandy knows Ooh. it's them, and they get the finish. So a huge, huge win here on the side of Insanity Esports. You talked about one of the teams you thought that could disrupt them. You said Insanity, and they just did it. Wow. What a play, though. What a play. There is still a long, long way to go. Invictus 
now looking to see if they can pick up the pieces who are just up ahead of them i mean neither team really having to defend much of a position on zorn but that is with the current phase right we are waiting to see where that next shift is going to be taking us so if it moves to that eastern side it is going to spell disaster for invictus oh. and Uhura. i'm going to say it right now invictus is done that's it it's over for them they did not play this one the way they needed to their tournament life is over so now i think it's time to focus on these teams that are going to be hunting down that top eight royals of war still in it inko they have five eliminations two players up and with a good game here they could stand a chance in that last game so it's really i think inko on up just fighting for their lives right now to make it into the prelims and then of course you have high fives and insanity just trying to go to that main event right off the rip well let's see who'll get that secured as it is going to be invictus now trying to maybe sneak in a few points at the expense of Ura as they make the break for Zorn, but someone's got to do it, right? And of course, looking at what we've got, I mean, Ura, they do make a successful push on towards the southern side, but they've got no real cover. A slight dip maybe to try and utilize, but that is not really going to suffice. And meanwhile, it's going to be Insanity now also just trying to play oh, the, the catch-up game, focusing down on Ura. Beautiful angle there and here come the Molotovs and they have that high ground So he's gonna be able to have that arm to reach all the way down there You can see him throwing out some smokes because he knows he needs to be able to make it into that blue zone But right now all he's trying to do is apply so much pressure onto them. I'm surprised. Does he have any more? No, he doesn't have any more smokes if he did Throwing them on to hoorah would have been huge to allow him to push up, but he's completely out of utility He's gonna have to get it done with that scar there See if they can find the play now. Ooh, quick jump over on towards the Wheels of War as Goodbye. they also start to take aim over on towards the Western Front. Now it's up to Malik to defend the honor of Hura. Insanity. Not going to be relenting any time soon. Continuing to push on forward. Ugh. Romulus in. Up they come. DBS in hand. I love this weapon. I call it the don't be silly and for a very good reason. If you oh. get too close, nasty stuff happens. <laughs> what did you just call it? Don't be silly. And uh, that <laughs> is what just happened. It's Sanity feeling themselves after taking down Team Falcons. Go down to a nade. You said it earlier, right? One nade can spell disaster. And right now, I guarantee you, there's nothing but silence on the side of Insanity. He's got to have to make a play here. Can he do it? Oh, the shots are too good for Malik. He's feeling himself. Goodbye. So that is Insanity done with seven eliminations. You know that hi fives is so excited here because they, they have a chance. They have a chance to try and make it happen and dethrone the Falcons. Oh, it's going to be close, though. Oh, it gets knocked. Vitaly! Two knocks! <laughs> seven with another! Oh, this is brutal. Now it's only one player up for high fives. They go for the push. They wanted this win. And Inko Gaming, seven, the last one up. It's DBS versus DBS. Seven's going to go for the res. Does he realize? And that allows Intense Game to push up for free. Here they come. Yeah. Ooh, got to watch out. Oh. Dunka. No, oh, he's getting Vitaly. Dick. dick. <laughs> oh, ooh. He, got he got the, the res. Pick up. Yeah. All right. Okay, I can't so the wheels of wool. That. <laughs> They're still in this. I mean, Inko, they they they just playing some super insane gameplay at this point. And of course, it is going to be Rafa and what is left of Intense Gaming now. Knocking on the door. I mean, Dream still holding steady. Not oh, moving oh, an oh. inch, but Vitaly, though, getting traded up. Cielo getting that nade off right there. Meanwhile, Rolls of War trying to keep their tournament life up and running. They have the angles here, and they're going to get some more eliminations. Beautiful shots there from that UMP. From that distance, too, you can't even see the shot markers, So, especially while it's suppressed. So good shots there from Tonka. Invictus still alive, right? I mean, yeah, they survived, but it's not enough points. Not enough points at the end of the day. So it's really up to see how many more we're going to get from Royals of War, Inko, and High Fives. Hmm. I did. I'm not even playing in this. My heart is like beating in my in my throat almost. <laughs> it's it's insane. I mean, we we just in the prelims, right? The qualifier, well, not the prelims. We're in the qualifier finals, 
There's, there's so much at stake here. Let's see whether or not Rafa can make something happen. I mean, an interesting play coming through from Dream, right? Dream has not moved an inch. Rafa is going to be falling to the zone. That is going to be intense gaming down and out as we are left with only four remaining squads. Seven. Oh, there could it's be over. a big cook just happening on the edge there. Yeah, those two, all those players are done for. High five is going to go out to the play zone. Just try to deny the points at this point, and, and I don't blame them at all. Um, so let's see who's going down. That's Invictus. It's Rolls of War with the chicken dinner there. Getting that beautiful position and just taking advantage of it. Man, what a way to get it done here right at the end. Before going into this game, guys, Rolls of War was in 10th place. So just below that cutoff, right? Um, and with that chicken dinner, seven eliminations as well. Look at that. Oh, he's like, we we go into the prelims, baby. We go into the prelims. <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, well, that's that's how that's a different way of celebrating, right? I mean, that's that's a, that's a cool way to do it. Just yeah, popping on them cool. sunglasses. <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe the sun's still shining in Brazil. I don't think it is because it's a little bit. Well, maybe it is. Yeah, yeah, that's it right. might still be shining. But either which way, I mean, there's a lot of uh, you know a lot of excitement now here for the whales of war. Yeah, I I'm curious to see what game to the the, the last Murma will hold for them. I love it. I love it. He had to put them glasses on because he's like, my future's too bright, son. <laughs> my future is too bright. Needs some shade. That is how you do it. Beautifully <laughs> done there from Royals of War. I, I, I said I love to see teams who mm. are just down and out, really looking like they need to clutch it up, and they do it right. Royals of War. Yeah. I will say they did get very, very circle blessed in that one, right? Um, mm. But you still have to be able to take advantage of it, and they did. Yeah, I mean, there's not much that we can fault on that one, right? Royals of War getting crowned the victors. And of course, you know, what better way than to celebrate a few of the amazing plays that we had in this game. A lot of crazy plays, like this one here coming through from the Death Wolves. I mean, I was expecting that clean sweep, but Inko being Inko just said, no thanks. They sure did. They said, no, sir. I mean, I thought that that was done for. But Seven said, I ain't going out like that. TBS <laughs> to the head. I mean, we saw so many clutch plays from single players in this tournament, right? I don't, I, we don't see any of them just like lay down and go out. Every single one goes out with a fight, steals a couple eliminations. I mean, it's so crazy, especially that nade that we're about to see here in a second. Oh, let's hope it comes up. But again, I mean, we also had a very contentious uh, fight for the high ground, right? So many teams trying to get themselves situated. But this was a beautiful clutch up coming through here from Insanity. Um, you know, just getting that play in onto the Falcons. But oh. this was just such a difficult rotation, especially for Hura. Yeah, I mean, they would have had that. But you know what? That beautiful, beautiful nade there from Hura just shut down Insanity's. All their momentum they had just gone in an instant and that's going to be tough because if they finish this game the way the way that they were running it i mean they could have won right they could have won this game out been in a great position uh but now with them that one nade that could that could end their chances right of going to the finals straight away as we take a look here at the damage graph and uh royals of war with the most damage from that position seven eliminations in total but only 47 damage more than what Insanity was able to accomplish in this exact same match. Also with seven eliminations. So I think like seven was kind of the name of the game here. Hoorah! Hey. Also picking up the seven. But in group, they just got to be different, right? Get those eight eliminations in as well. Yeah, let's take a look here. Team Falcons, right? Still, even though they went out so late still put up five eliminations on the board <laughs> so uh i was saying right if you really wanted to pass them up you had to take them out yourself and uh insanity did it but just maybe a little bit later than they wanted to and the mvp is gonna go to seven rightfully so this man was definitely clutching things up towards the end six eliminations is insane yeah i mean also looking at that damage right we got the seven six seven right there so beautiful beautiful performance and i mean we did see Inko a little bit earlier today also just sneak in a few impressive, impressive plays, right? So Seven just keeping that consistently flowing. And I think it's really going to boil down to what, to what uh, Game 6 will have in store. Because I think at this point in time, it could still pretty much go either which way.
Yeah, 100 percent It could definitely go in any direction here. Again, folks, we're looking to see which players are gonna go first place, because that's gonna go straight to the finals and then the next eight teams. So we're gonna go see go to the prelims. And so we're gonna see quite a few teams go home here today. And um my one of my questions is yeah, we just saw seven and Inko clutch it up right there right get some nice points good position was it enough though do you think it was enough for them to make it into the prelims i mean that's gonna be the big question right we'll only know when we get a good decent look at those rankings but first up it's gonna be match rankings with the the royals of war walking away with 17 delicious points seven of those of course coming through from that winner winner chicken dinner elums and then if we look at inko sitting with 14 points up I mean, it's it's gonna be close. It's gonna definitely be close. Again, again, again, folks. Royals of War prior to this game was in tenth place. They did not make the cutoff, right? Uh, they only had eighteen points. A seventeen-point game. They basically doubled their entire day's worth <laughs> of points in just one game, and it couldn't have been done at a better time, especially right here towards the end. Oh, clutching it up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no better time other than when it matters. Oh. Well, speaking about what matters, look at this leaderboard. A six-slot jump coming through there from Royals of War. As you said, doubling down on the points, sitting now on a very comfortable 35 points. Looking very, looking solid, right? I mean, by that, mm. they should now make it into the finals. But that's not too hot because you look right there. Uh, 10th place, 22 points, you know? Mm -hmm. 13 is a good good good advantage so they should make it into the prelims right but at the same time we got to look towards the top right one match left to go you saw it there the falcons are on top with 50 points high fives mm -hmm. are right below them with 47 insanity next with 42 and royals award next with 35 what's gonna happen here dk what's gonna happen if, if you're any uh... of these teams <laughs> I think you have to go for Falcons. You got, I mean, there's no yeah. difference. There's no difference between yeah. second or eight. You know you're going to go to the prelims. Why not do everything you can to sneak into the finals? Because I'll tell you right now, you don't want to go against those partnership teams, man. Those guys are going to come in hot in the next couple of days. I mean, all I can tell you, it is going to be, it's going to be so dang tough to see. But of course, speaking about tough to see, also got to give a big shout out, right, uh, to Realme 12 Pro. Uh, as we've been seeing some amazing things on that. So the Realme 12 Pro elevates your photography experience with 120x super zoom and, of course, the performance in-game. So be sure to get your hands on that. Go take a look. You know, just go see it, what amazing features this phone has. Uh, and yeah. How to be a portrait master. Welcome back, everybody, guys. Make sure you guys go check out the sixth anniversary here for PUBG Mobile. It's available right now. So enjoy the new theme gameplay, the sky high spectacle, a magical world of with the, gi the, gi the gigantic Nimbus. I don't know if you guys seen that. The flying carpet is absolutely insane. Go check it out today.
And it all comes down to this. The final game of the PUBG Mobile Global Open Brazil Qualifier Finals. It's in Miramar. Here's the story, guys. It's up to who's going to get first place. First place is going straight to the finals. The next eight teams making it on over to the prelims. And the rest after that are going home. So let's see what happens here, DK. Now, before I get your opinion on this, I was asked the chat. I asked the chat, who's going to do this, right? Are Falcons going to win the whole thing? Or are we going to see a team disrupt them, right? I got a couple opinions here that I want to share, right? Green Little Monster said, the Falcons have this lobby locked down. Matt said it all comes <laughs> down to this. And we even have some people saying, Falcons do not choke. It's time to clutch it up. So let's see if they can get it done here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they got to get it done, right? That is going to be the order of the day. We got to see the Falcons uh, go beyond the top. Hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> see if they can clutch that one out. But I think the big question for me, at least for now, is going to be, where's that zone going to go, right? We did see a nice uh, kind of centralized zone in the first match here on, on, on Miramar. But uh, I, mean, I don't know, maybe maybe something a little bit further up. Oh, never mind. It's going right down into Chumacera, Mi uh, Mi uh, Minas Ooh! del Valle. Let's go. Circle all the way down to Los Higo. Oh, my gosh! I told you! They have to hunt him down! They had to hunt him down, and that's exactly what they did! High fives! Not messing around saying we gotta cripple the Falcons some way. We gotta clip those wings because they're flying too high. And high fives did it. Taking down a monster player from Team Falcons. And I think they're gonna just take the money and run at this point. Yeah, I mean, it looks like that, uh, that could be an option at this point. I'm not quite sure where they're going to run. Hopefully, it's towards zone. Uh, because if they go in any other direction, they're going to find even more teams. So, uh, yeah, definitely forward is going to be the way to try and make this play move. But yeah, big ups, though, to hi fives Starting off super, super aggressive. But now they've got to follow through. I tell you what, they do have to follow through. But if they do, it could be all on the back of that one play from Snowick. So, I mean, man, you see the chat. Matt said, can we get a caca for the clutch? After that one, I'm going to I'm gonna be like, you know, caca. <laughs> you know, that one. <laughs> Oof. That hurt. But you know what? I'll tell you what. If any team can do it as a three-man, it's the Falcons. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, no doubt. No doubt. So, the stakes are uh, increasingly <laughs> climbing higher and higher up that board. Money makers, we also yet to see a strong play on their end. As we as we have now on the side of the board, they're only six points away from catching up to be bold and of course the players in from faction Brazil, but they need even more points. They need at least nine to kind of rub shoulders there with Inko and maybe even go beyond that. So yeah, I mean you said it already, right? This is gonna be the decisive match to see who will not only be securing themselves that top position but also who will be the other teams to close up our top nine rock oh. now dealing a heavy blow into the study of money makers oh my gosh and here they go back and forth but none of them are looted at all so anybody could take this we can see the pistols coming out oh and he almost gets them down to half an hp <laughs> but the money makers survive and, oh, that's going to really hurt Rook. Where were they at on the leaderboards? I know they were quite... Yeah, they were in 14th place. So, yeah, I think that is going to be it for Rook. Um, and at this point, the last two players can pretty much do whatever they want. If you're them, I think you just got to have a performance of a lifetime. Just make something happen. And who knows what can happen in the future. Yeah, I mean, go out with a bang, right? Now would be an, a phenomenal time to just play like an absolute beast. So uh, let's see whether or not that is what they're going to be doing. In the meanwhile, Smoke still holding on to a beautiful center zone right up into Chumacera. I mean, we do see Insanity also slowly starting to pull in from that western side. We've got Marlin testing the waters, right? Doing a little bit of that, uh, that toe test, right? Just yes. dipping their toes in the water to see what the temperature's like. That's right, Chimmy. Gotta make sure. Gotta make sure the water is warm because, oh, things are starting to heat up. That's for sure. You can see Smoke Gaming getting an FPP, trying to get that loot. 
Meanwhile, the Falcons very close. Uh oh, way too close to high fives here. Will he hear action? Because you know that high fives are trying to just absolutely destroy the Falcons. They don't want them to get a single point. If they do, they're going to steal this away 100%. Mm. So action is trying to play this very carefully. But I tell you what, if Rob's hurt him, they're, the whole squad's coming for action right now. Well, let's see what's going to come through here. It doesn't seem like Hi Fi are uh, overly committed. On oh, they have to hear him. The north. Oh, yeah, now it is on, right? Oh, I see no, moving in as well. Oh, this <laughs> is so dangerous. They're going to get the revenge. The rest of the team from Hi Fi needs to come and support their player right now. They can't just leave him alone. Yeah. Yeah. If we've ever seen the backup. This would have to be it right here. We got three oh, just over the there. distance. Oh! Oh! oh, oh, oh, oh. oh. And he gets Rob. Oh. Rob's got the nade, and I think he pulled the pin first. Ooh, it's going towards Icy. Ooh, ooh, he had to ooh. run out. Oh, Icy got the better of him, though. Where's the rest of the Hi Fi squad? They need to be coming in hot right now to help their teammate. And they oh. do right on time. Team Falcons are in big trouble. It's all up to top. The man, yeah. the myth, the legend, and get shot in his <laughs> back. It is all over for Team Falcons. Well, I mean, you can't you can't even write this as a story, right? Because it just wouldn't make sense, right? It's like it's it's absolutely insane. This this is like you can't script any of the stuff. High fives one point away Ooh. one single point away from taking the lead over and above that of the falcons goodness gracious way to go that is how you do it right there now as a matter of fact i'm looking at it okay uh the falcons have more chicken dinners than the high fives okay mm. so i believe yeah high fives needs to get another point one more point, yeah. and they're passing him up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They have to, they and cannot tie. They cannot go out. They need at least one point. Mm. I mean, talk about pressure, right? I mean, this would, this would, this would be the most important point today for high fives. One single point stands between them and a direct invite into the main event. So there is so, so much riding on this. I mean, Inko, I'm expecting them also to come in pretty aggressive for the remainder of this match because, I mean, yes, they've been able to get themselves up into ninth place. They do sit with a five-point lead, but you can bet your silver dollar on it that Be Bold and the players there from Faction Brazil, they are going to come in hot trying to claim that position. Oh, 100%. And I tell you what, man, uh, you know, every, yeah, every other team in the top, you know, standings as well. Insanity, right? Royals of War, they saw that in the feed. They know whose target they have to go ahead and cross now. Now high fives have that target on their back. So we'll see what happens, though. This is a very interesting circle, and it goes to another very interesting shift. <laughs> we'll see right now. High fives are all the way up in the north. They're going to have to cross on down. They need at least one more point. They cannot go out right now. Otherwise, Falcons will move on. Most likely, unless we see another one of the teams pass them up. But mm. we're going to see what happens here as they're making that rotation on south. Meanwhile, uh, hoorah, are the team furthest away from this circle. They're going to have a real tough one getting into this one. Yeah, they're going to have a, a pretty bumpy ride. I don't think as bumpy as uh, that we can see coming through here on Insanity side as they are showing off a few of those vehicle skills. But, I mean, they, they're so much opportunity especially moving in towards that southern side of the zone right yes we got inko we got intense gaming also situated up in towards the center but i mean looking south looking north i think it's still very much up for grabs right first come first though the quicker you can get yourself situated the more opportunity you have to defend and lock in those much needed points 100 percent. we can just we just saw right there anything can happen you know it's not out until the last second of the last blue zone tick and we're gonna see right now as gizmo trying to keep their tournament alive here they were in there in second to last they need a chicken dinner and crazy elimination so we need to see them 
really press Royals of War here. And Royals of War are in a position to where if they get a chicken dinner, they could end up going to the finals here. So let's mm -hmm. see what they do. I mean, it's a pretty crazy play, right? Insanity can make a can make <laughs> play now. I think you gotta the push this position. if you're Royals of War. <laughs> yeah, because right? I mean, yeah, sure, it's 15 point gap, but they can easily close that one up as you said, right? Getting the winner when a chicken's dinner that already awards 10 points. So whatever whatever they get over and above that, we'll just get them that much closer to knocking on the door. But first up, Invictus. Uh oh, bring in a little bit of heat. We don't really want to, Insanity is one of the teams we're getting an eye on, but I'm seeing the feed as well. Rolls of War, we're getting into it big time. And uh, they end up losing a player in that fight. But right now, it's all about Insanity trying to soak up some free points here. As they are going up against Invictus. Invictus losing a player. Silence. And this is what happens whenever you're so low on the leaderboards. If they realize it's you, they're full pushing you no matter what. And that's exactly what's happening. Let's see how this one will unravel. Silence. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Getting stopped. That's it right there. So Even Invictus. If... Even if you're last on the leaderboards, you can't go in in a 1v1 if you can afford it. Because the DBS is too strong. Too strong. <laughs> and that ugh, they just crippled insanity right there. And this next circle is going to go up a little bit north, more towards Chumacerra. And mm -hmm. the rest of these teams, money makers, hoorah, and uh, be bold. They're gonna have to push on in. In the zone, in the middle of the zone, you got intense game. Royals of War and Hi-Fi are very close to each other. Oh, I mean that's all the that's all the all the teams that are you know pretty much in the running to bring in that upset. Look at the spray though coming through here from Hoorah. No fear again, just letting it loose, fighting two players, and now. And it's going to be Invictus holding on with the solo. The rest of the Hoorah squad now just rushing forward, doing a little bit of cleanup as they find the angles. But Invictus, right, not going to be stopping, just focusing on f moving forward. And that is it. Yeah, so Invictus done for. Might as well do some donuts and uh, just have some fun here. Maybe disrupt some players. Let's see what he decides to do. Meanwhile, big push coming on over. Faction Brazil. Right there uh, on that cutoff. They were in 11th place. They need to survive. Only, it's actually only one player up left. He has to clutch this up if he wants to keep his team's tournament alive. Beautiful shot there. Can he keep it going? He's trying to put this team on his back. It goes a little bit too quickly on that peak. Beautiful pre-fire, though, from Death Wolves. And that is going to be Faction Brazil done for. And they got a chicken dinner in this tournament. That's going to hurt. Yeah, that one's gonna sting quite a bit, but you gotta give it up to the Death Wolves here, just ensuring that they kind of stay where they are. Okay, like you know, same position where they were kind of coming into this match. Another team that needs to make up a lot of ground though is still gonna be the money makers here. As we can see, they've come into the game with 16 points on board. They've so far been able to secure themselves two eliminations. Talent is uh very possibly gonna be their third point on board. And they'll then, well, they still have a slight bit of a way to go. They are going to be chasing 17. So three points up. They still need an additional six points to be just on par with Ooh. ninth place. Well, yeah, right there on par on that cutoff. Insanity's dreams of going straight to the finals are now over. They are out in third place. We'll see them in the prelim. Rolls of War still alive. Need that chicken dinner and crazy eliminations if they want to pull off a miracle. High fives. Uh, are still right there. I believe they still need one more point. With three players up, it's looking pretty good as teams are starting to dwindle down. They might just do it with a placement point. Let's see what happens, though, as money makers are pressing the issue onto Inko. Uh, actually, though, no, that was Hoorah! Hoorah! Gone! So, Hoorah were in that seventh place position, but with, mm -hmm. with how many eliminations they got, that might be just enough to sleep, sneak them into the prelims. Well, we've got to see. So that puts them up on about, what, 37 points? So, uh, yeah, there's still a lot of gameplay that is yet to come through. But that was a good performance now coming in from the side there of the Money Makers. They still have a, a bit of a way to play. Meanwhile, it's going to be bold, uh, be bold, rather, also trying their hand at getting themselves up into the top nine. They've only found one Elam so far, and they are down to a three-piece. 
Goodness gracious. Let's see what they do. By the way, folks, for those of you guys watching, high fives are still tied with the Falcons. Falcons has more chicken dinners and more placement points. So um, they need one more point. And I think what they're doing right now is just playing it safe, just looking to get into that top eight position, right? So they can get at least one placement point. And they're right in the center of the circle. So they're looking good, but they just can't afford to make a mistake here and go out. They gotta wait. <laughs> Three yeah. other teams need to fall before them. Yep. So, uh, I mean, if you've ever played a, a very, very decisive game, I think this is definitely gonna be one of those <laughs> oh matches. I mean, you... like, oh, dude. <laughs> Yo, high fives, you do not want to go to the prelims, guys. <laughs> Get that point. You know what I'm saying? Get that guaranteed money in the finals. And, uh, you know, Team Falcons are going to be absolute monstrous in those prelims. So I guarantee you, all those squads that are, you know, those partnership teams are kind of hoping that high fives goes out because they do not want to go against the Falcons in the prelims. Yeah. Ooh. Biscay taking a very risky approach there out in the blue. Now it's up to IC to see if they can survive the onslaught, but it's going to be a very tough angle to try and recover from the rest of money makers not looking to be in such a good position. I mean, they've essentially dropped down to one single player, right? Their fate rides on one player's performance here. The rest is then are going to be looking down towards that southern side, or closer to center, rather, is where we have the Royals of War up against uh, the squad here from Inko. I mean, if Inko keeps on with the momentum that we've seen in the first four games, first five matches, ooh, they could definitely play quite a bit of an upset here. Oh, yes, they can. And they're going to continue to try to do that with every little ounce of strength that they have. Even teams like, you know, you see there at the bottom, intense game, you know, uh, Gizmo, they're not out of this yet. I mean, if they get a good finish here, they could do it. Moneymakers have seven eliminations? That is pretty insane. They only have one player up, but with seven elims, that's pretty good. They need two more points, right, to be on 27. So, well, that's hoping that Inko doesn't score any additional points in the meanwhile. But let's see what's going to happen here. We've got Death Walls and, of course, Intense Gaming getting ready for a little bit of a showdown here. Who's going to be the one to clutch up? It's going to be Zeus Boy to let loose the first nade. Will it reach? Not quite. It finds smoke, but there's no damage points in smoke. Here they go. So let's see what they ought to do. Tense game. Trying to play this very careful. Trying to keep their tournament alive, but they're not going to be doing it. Just sitting back on their feet. They're going to have to definitely get up start moving and getting some eliminations but with this zone it could be tricky if they really want it to go to them because it's going to be a hard shift if they do now they do it's pretty central it's not too far away from them um but they're gonna have to cross down that little ridge line and try to do it safely into this next circle they're gonna be running up under worlds of war and inko so let's see how they have to play it well here we go Pressure is on. It's almost the final countdown. We are about uh, four phases away from that being the case here. But now it's going to be up to the Death Wolves to see can they play the disruption onto the side here of Be Bold. I mean, Be Bold, they've also been playing a very consistent game here so far today, right? Finding themselves on 22 points. But looking at what the Death Wolves have, right? Seven Elims, that's going to be really tough to beat at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, 37 points. I mean, not to mention, every single team above them has zero. So, technically, right now, <laughs> they're they're in fourth place. Yeah. They're literally in fourth place. If all the other teams above them go out, they're going to get four. Oh, yeah. They're going to be tied with fourth with Hoorah. So, that's a pretty crazy shit. There's a lot of teams that can still pass up these teams. Hoorah might not even make it into this uh, prelims, depending on how these teams below play. So, we'll see how that... How big they're going to get in this game. As I am just right now staring at these leaderboards. I'm also staring at high fives, wondering when they're going to get this last dang point. Because this <laughs> is getting crazy. Oh, uh, Did the timer going? They still have three teams. Uh-oh. That need to fall before we get into place and point territory. Ooh, oh, what a nade. What a nade, though. Beautiful. 
Beautiful nade right there. That's gonna be a couple there. Be bold. Oof. That could be their turn. That that's most likely gonna be their tournament life right there. Out in tenth place. This is a big one though. Here we go. Inko. An intense game going at it. Intense game. So desperate. They have, oh, it looks like two players up. They're trying to survive. Inko going down right there on that cutoff. And, uh, oh, it's going to be really, really close here. Will that be enough to make it in? We'll find out later. Meanwhile, Rolls of War still trying to have a pop-off game. But with only two players up, it's not looking good. They do get that knock there. Era, oh, going to soak up three eliminations. He'll definitely take that. That's for sure. Well, there we go. Another one backed up, chipped out. It's going to be Smoke Gaming to step down with uh, one elimination to their name. Also not finding any of those placement points to accompany them. But it is now up to our nine remaining teams. So we got still got Koa there from Moneymakers playing a serious game of hide-and-seek all by their lonesome over there. I'll tell you who's playing a serious game of hide and seek. That's high fives right now. High fives are just like, <laughs> hey, they're just watching the team count go down and they're just clapping away in that nice, pretty building that they got over there. Because one more team goes down and these guys are going to the finals. Mm. I, I want to see them just like peel out of the compound when we see, you know, another team fall down. Just start and dancing. Then it's just like, yeah, it's just like a high five. Here we go. <laughs> By the way, I just heard in the chat that this is uh, Snowix's first time IGLing. So, uh, I mean, if that's true, this, this guy really made the right decision, right? Mm -hmm. To push and take out the Falcons early on. They, you could just tell that they were on the back foot. They didn't expect it, didn't see it coming. And I, I said it, right? If you want to take it away from them, you have to do it yourself. You can't just leave it up to chance, play the same game. I said that at the start of the tournament, and it gets me so excited to see IGLs, especially new IGLs, right? Come on in and just straight up say, hey, you know what? We, we got to get it done. Let's change our strats. And that is how you make that money right there. I mean, dude, if it's natural talent, it's natural talent, right? So, you know, just capitalize on it. So, mad respect going out to Snowix. Uh, if it's their first time IGLing, I mean, what a way to debut as an IGL. In the meanwhile, things are still looking pretty tight here, right? We've got the Death Walls moving in. That is Be Bold. Getting closed up. Out there are ninth place. And this is now go time, right? High, yep. high fives, they can just go absolutely crazy at this point yep that is it high fives are gonna win it just like that and they're <laughs> gonna do it in a crazy fashion here towards the aim not uh, towards the end now it's all about that that bottom plays right look at that intense game have one heck of a gap they're gonna have to cross here they have all four players up we could see them sneak into these prelims but they have to win this game they have to finish strong mm-hmm we could also have a potential shift coming through with regards to our top nine teams, right? So the gatekeepers sitting on 27 points. Moneymakers, 28. They, they're getting close, right? They need placement points because I don't see uh, Koa getting any additional eliminations at this point, right? That's going to be a super risky play. So they're going to have to try and keep it quiet, but we do also then say goodbye to Hugo. And Snowix locks in yet another point for the team. Now sitting on a very comfortable five eliminations. And now there's no doubt yep. that High Fives will be making it. Wow. All the way to the finals. Unbelievable. Beautifully done for this team. We saw them just from the start, right? Just making some beautiful pushes and showing that they got that scrap in them. And they show that they're also not, you know, they're willing to change their strategy according to what is needed. And they got it done. So now my eyes are on who's going to be able to make it into these prelims. And, you know, they cut Inko with 27 points. They have one elimination. So that's going to make it 28. Uh, we see Moneymaker still alive, right? With seven eliminations. That's quite a bit. But with only, only one player left, it's not looking good. I think it's really up to a tense game to pull off a heck of a finish here and try to just destroy this lobby. Because Death Wolves with seven eliminations. They punched their ticket on over to the prelims. Yeah, that's going to be there. So now the zone is going to be shifting up, moving into no man's land. Right there out in the middle of nowhere. So Zebra Master 
still having to move up. And I, I think this is going to be an interesting section of the map to play through, right? There's so many ridges here for teams to utilize uh, to their advantage, as you can see, right? Essentially, center zone, there's been no need to move because the teams can just sit there, perched and ready to go, just picking away at the composi competition, moving closer to them. Yes, sir, indeed. So let's take a look here at uh, Monkey. Just looking out in the direction, trying to figure out what to do. Meanwhile, Death will. Everyone's just playing this so silent because, I mean, look at this. You got three teams who are on the risk of just going home forever. That's it. Or not forever, but at least for this uh, this game, you know, this tournament. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens here. Is a tense game. Do have one player that's knocked. And Gizmo. Oh, they need him. They need to just start wiping everybody if they want to stand a chance at this point. It's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty tall order. I mean, sure they've got uh, a decent play account, still got three up. Ooh, but death and wolves. And they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Intense. Also, I, I don't really see uh much hope on the horizon here for Intense. I mean they are just caught up in such a challenging position over towards the side there. So definitely gotta watch all these plays though. But here we go. That is gonna be Rato Boy logging in onto Frog. One down, two more to go. Oh my gosh, intense game. They are in trouble. Oh, lucky for them, he doesn't have any utility. I was about to say, if he had one Nader Molly, they're gone for. Uh, but you know what? He does not have it. So there it goes, Gizmo. That's it. Their tournament life is over. Intense game tried so hard. They had the most players Ooh. up, got in a bad position, and weren't able to get it done. So here we go. The final of the match. Death will stance in back and forth, left and right, putting the jukes on. And uh, just trying to survive here towards the end. Meanwhile, we're going to go ahead and see Zebra. Push it on down. Looking to get the final chicken dinner of the day. Oh, man, if High Fives win this match, what a way mm. to just, you know, punch your ticket to the finals, no? I mean, 100%, dude. 100%. But they could still be... A little bit of a, a little bit of a shift, right? Mm. Money makers still alive, right? Sitting on seven eliminations alongside the points they had coming in here, so that puts them on what is that, twenty six points? Mm -hmm. So, if they go out in a potential third place, they could be a hope. But now there's going to be a lot of pressure being built, uh, especially with the Death Wolves moving in on Koa's <laughs> position. So uh, he is so on there. Survive. Oh, meanwhile, look at this. Now, here come high fives taking out Death Wolves. And uh, this is the last player for Money Makers. He's by himself just trying to hold it down in a shack, <laughs> saying, Please let me live. I want to go to the prelims. And that, no. you know, that's a stun. <laughs> it's a stun grenade. He's okay. Oh, he's down to half an HP. Oh, he's, he's going to have the angles. Is he going to get the jump shot? Nope. Ooh, Go for the heal. Dude. Koa survive. Come on, pull off a miracle. Money makers, you gotta make that money. He's looking, Ooh, he's looking over, he's talking to him, he's saying, please, what about more? Not like this, please. I gotta go to the playlist. Oh, he, he falls down. But he went down oh. in glorious battle. Wow. Wow. This, this has been such an intense day. Dude, <laughs> <What> like. <a> <laughs> <laughs> wow. Woo. Oh, right. man. And now high fives looking high fives. good. Yeah. yeah. They're just showing off now. They're just showing off. It's like, you know what? Yeah. Even Death Wolves. I mean, they've got double digit Elums. 100%. 100%. I wonder what Death Wolves are going to go um, at the end. Wait, 13 eliminations? Yeah, 13 eliminations. And this ranking, mm -hmm. team, the Falcons might even get <laughs> disrupted here. Yeah. Wow, what a way to end this. It really come, it came down to the end. And that's what happens when you have, you know, six matches. It doesn't matter how good the teams are, you know, whether they bait in PMGC. In six matches, anything can happen, you know? And hi fives with that heads up play to disrupt them just said, you know what? Oh. We're going to go ahead and take that final ticket, buddy. And Death Wolves with 15. Oh my gosh. Going to take this chicken dinner right here towards the end. And do it in style. But, oh, monkey, yeah, try to try to put up a fight, but that Molly is gonna do it. So look at that, Death Wolves, gonna climb the leaderboards after that one. That's 26 points 
that is more points than I think Intense Game got the whole tournament in just one game. I mean, I mean, dude, like this is absolutely insane, right? So we we know that there's been an initial change with the high fives, right? But now, Whew. where's Death Wolves gonna sit, right? Because they got 16 points plus the 10 elims that they got. Oh, uh, well, 16 eliminations plus the 10 points. So that's 26. That puts them, you know, like, uh, it's there. It's up there. Oof. And can you imagine, too, uh, I, I can't wait to see where the overall leaderboards is and where it stands, you know? Because, uh, guys, of course, you know, wait for the official results, you know, towards the end, because you never know what could happen. But that is mm. how you do it there, because you can just see. Look at this. Look at shaking. His hands are shaking. Right? He did that heart, <laughs> but those fingers were shaking. I, I, I caught that. These guys are feeling it right now. As we take a look here at the highlights, and this is this is it right here. This is the main highlight. High fives, Snow Lakes in his first trip as IGL, calling the play, and they clutched it up. Oh, it was it, it was it was phenomenal to see such an insane way. But gotta say though, know, just this match overall. What a change, though. What a performance from these teams in the last game of the day. 100%. 100%, man. We saw some teams who we thought were down and out just go nuts in the last few games of the day. And honestly, an, um, one of my teams I'm going to call probably one of my wildcard teams, right? I got to give shout outs to Insanity. I think they did a great mm. job today, you know? Yeah. Especially starting off with only two points after two matches. To come out as hard as they did for the rest of the day. I mean, yeah, they, they didn't have that finish they wanted in the last game. But, I mean, still, to, to, to really climb that high is, is impressive for sure. Yeah, dude, that, that, that, takes, that takes a lot of perseverance to pull off a move like that, right? So, you know, being able to bounce back after having such a tough run. And then they just kept on with the consistency, right? They didn't stop there. They just kept it going, kept it flowing. And, I mean... It paid off, right? They made it in. And then Death Wolves just literally staying true to their name. They busted out their fangs right towards the end and had the best game of the entire tournament. We cannot, yeah. like, doubt them at all. I mean, that's, that was so many points. Where were they? Right? You can see right here on that replay. They were... Wow. They were pretty low on the leaderboards right there, right? But with mm -hmm. that, they were eighth. Eighth place. Yeah. With that many points... Mm -hmm. With 26 points, that's more than what the Falcons got. That's for sure. Yep. Now, my question yep, is, was it more than what hi fis got? That's how crazy. <laughs> that's, that's how crazy of a performance they got. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, it's up there. That's why I said it's up there. I don't know up where, but it's up there, right? We're going to find out pretty, pretty soon once we get into the match rankings and those overall rankings. But, I mean, what a way to close up the, mat uh, the day here, <laughs> right? I mean, oh, this was the craziest goodness. match of the day. 16 eliminations, 10 total placement points, the most in this qualifier finals. 26 total points, way to clutch it up. And then high fives doing it in style, taking out the Falcons early, crippling them, and, you know, trying to punch that ticket to the finals. But my question is, which teams is going to be? One of these two. And then uh, also, who's going to make it? Those, those remaining eight teams. I mean, a lot of questions here, DK. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my my like, I don't I, like, I I can't even process what we just witnessed, right? It was such an insane performance that we had coming in here. Absolute excitement across the board. Uh, unfortunate for Faction Brazil, uh, getting sent back with a bag of donuts. You know, it works, I guess. You know, a full tummy helps. Um, if you can't get those points on, but speaking about points, though. It is going to be the MVP coming in from the Death Wolves. Absolutely just obliterating everybody. Six eliminations Oof. and hitting just over a thousand damage. Wow, with a, that thousand damage <laughs> is absolutely insane. I mean, that was a pop-off performance. One that you definitely got to put in your highlight reel for sure. To do that at this stage was crazy. You know, I will say having the Falcons on the lobby helped. I think get that many eliminations, that's for sure. But to soak up that many points in the last game is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's it's insane, right? But I'll be surprised because we've been seeing so many upsets come through just in today's six matches, right? I mean, well, 
You can't really count the first match because it was the first match of the day. The Falcons did their thing, came through with a glorious 14 point el uh, 14 elimination when I win a chicken dinner. But the Death Wolves just came out of left field, just ripped it up and went straight in for the finish. 100%. Now it's time to take a look at the standings and see who won this thing. It is the high fives. Look at that. 62 total points and death wolves did pass up the falcons as well moving up six rankings all the way up to that second place so wow that high five is going straight to the finals death wolves are going to meet the falcons again and all the rest of these teams in the prelims now the question is who made it and it was inko gaming money makers were off by one point hmm Dude, I mean, Jukes, like, that is... Woo! That's oh. crazy. That is... I mean, had Moneymakers gotten that final Elam, right? Just say the decisive play between fourth and third place, that would have been them in ninth, right then and there. It, like, one single point. Oh, that hurts so bad. I mean, for them to go down by just one point is insane and i think that we saw what was an intense game down by two points to a huge mm. name in brazilian esports not able to make it here so i mean hopefully these guys definitely you know hit the books put in that work we see them come back because i know these players have tons of potential and the thing is that it's mm. tough in a one day tournament you know even yeah. for the falcons i will be honest if it was three days falcons win this thing in my opinion yeah. without a doubt but you know with <laughs> one day you gotta clutch up and let's be real right mm. bmgc tournaments like that they're short form tournaments you got to be able to clutch up you got to be able to change your strategies when the time comes and i'll tell you what high fives said Oof. i know where you guys drop we're coming for you so mm -hmm. it's a lesson i think the falcons learned they learned it the hard way but they'll have the prelims to definitely learn and adapt and not make sure that it doesn't happen again yeah, but I mean, with the, with the prelims comes a whole different dynamic, right? Because we are adding in the 16 partnership teams. So there's so much more on the table moving into that. Absolutely. So there's going to be some beasts coming up, guys. It's going to be <laughs> on Monday. So mark your calendars. It's going to be huge. And it's going to be a lot of fun. As we go ahead and take a look at the players here, right here at the end. Look at that. There it is. Team Falcons. Thumbs up. Uh, not smiling as hard as I think that they that they should be though. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I th obviously they would have liked to, you know, make it beyond a 16th place finish in the last match, you know, just for bragging rights. But regardless of that, I still think they had a phenomenal day, finishing strong, 51 points up, um, you know, and just competing against so many strong teams that we've seen here, right? The high fives, um, the Death Wolves. Zebra Masters all just stepping it up when they needed to. Even Insanity coming in with a, a really clutch up play here. 100%. 100%. And you know what? Just looking at the at uh, at the Falcons' faces, I think, you know, obviously they're bummed because, you know, they didn't go straight to the finals. But I don't think they're too mad about it because I think they, they know that they're going there anyway. You know? Mm. Like, yeah, the partnerships are coming. This is the second place global championship team here these guys do not mess around and they're probably just be like hey you know what eh, i guess we're gonna have to do more practice before we get to the finals mm. i mean it's not like it's a bad thing right true uh, extra practice goes uh goes a long way who knows they might even come back with a super insane vengeance play uh you know from that but of course the moments of the day right monkey Hitting a beautiful play there, only to get upset by Vitsali on the edge. <laughs> I mean, what? Oh, beautiful. But hey, those points, right? Added yeah. to that mm. ending, right? And we're able to get them right where they needed to be. Be bold with that clutch play. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to see them. But hopefully we see players like that, you know, in the future. I mean, we've seen a lot of roster swaps. I think we saw a lot of big plays from some names that you know, I haven't seen before, and hopefully to see some more action from them in the future. This was a big one though. Look at that. Mm. Uh, three players and one nade. He's going for the thirst. And I for sure thought he was gonna finish this out, but seven from Inko said, uh-uh, no sir, mm. not today. <laughs> Access denied. <laughs> oh, exactly. Oh, crazy. Oh. But hey, oh, actually, 
I think that was the play that let them stay in. If you think about it. Yeah. Yep, that mm -hmm. one play. If they if he doesn't clutch that up right there, Inko doesn't make it. How crazy is that? It's it's it's insane, dude. I mean, it, it could have gone in so many different ways, right? It could have had so many different outcomes, but it went for this, right? So I, I think Inko uh, just stepped up exactly when they needed to step up. Seven has been ruthless today, right? We've oh seen the craziest, God. craziest play coming through from him. 100%. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting. Use the hashtags as well. You go ahead and tag us at myself, Hot Jukes, and DK. Thank you so much for being here, and we'll hope to see you again on the next one. It's Monday. Mark your calendars. I've been giving you